All right, so we're going to do things just a little bit different today. Uh, right now, it's just uh, me and Cyrus because uh, Distro and Cash Rap has not seen, or I'm not, not seen, I haven't played or haven't beaten Horizon Zero Dawn yet. So right now, it's uh, Cyrus and I, Trade Hold, going to be talking about uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, possible uh, things that might happen in the next game, which was just announced, uh, Forbidden West. Um, so how much do you remember of Horizon Zero Dawn, Cyrus? Uh, I'm pretty well versed, and I actually just recently replayed it. So, oh, nice. <laughs> Did you play the Forbidden Wild? Uh, what's it called? No, Frozen Wild. Sorry, Frozen Wild. Uh, no, I haven't played that, but I heard that it wasn't too. It didn't have too much of an impact it, on the actual story. So, it, yeah, in I mean, I can see them bringing some of that stuff in, um, to the next game, but I don't. It it might also also be like DLC continuation type of thing. Like it might not make a an impact in the main core story. It might not make a um, appearance, um, but it definitely like foreshadows some extra events coming up. Um, so, but uh, what do you think in regards to? And this is the reason why like we were okay with just doing a a small separate recording for uh, Horizon because uh, Horizon's a completely new IP. All the ideas are new. Um, there isn't much to go on in terms of what we can think will happen. But what do you like? What are you thinking when you think of you know the Forbidden West, um, and what where they might go with the story? Um, honestly, I'm not really sure because I mean I seen at the end of the game there was obvious like a little teaser for what was to come. So. But as far as going further west, I'm not really sure what to expect, honestly. Right. Yeah. And that, that's pretty much what I think anyone would say, too, to be honest. Because um, I know that uh, even like Distro was talking about, well, maybe we can, you know, wait for us to finish the game and we can talk like just about Horizon. I'm like, yeah, we can talk just about Horizon, but we can't say much about the sequel. Um, now... Are you familiar with when they talked about, uh, or do you remember much when they talked about Rost? Uh, which, what do you mean? Which part? Near the end when uh, Aloy talks about Rost or uh, with uh, Mother Tirsa and how he uh, was exiled. Do you remember much about that conversation? Uh, not offhand. Oh, maybe I don't remember as much as I thought I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. This, well, here's the thing. They didn't make it a focus. Like, it was an optional conversation, which I thought was weird. But I felt like the developers intentionally did that so that you wouldn't put too much emphasis. Like, they, they wouldn't put too much emphasis on it and you wouldn't focus too much on it. Um, but what happened was, uh, if, if you don't remember the story with how Rost became exiled, what happened was uh, some bandits came to the Nora tribe basically and took some people hostage they camped out at certain parts of it uh in particular they mentioned devil's thirst and there were like reports of like strange noises when uh, the Nora people were tracking them the the bandits and uh they couldn't take out the bandits because every time they got within arrow shot the bandits would kill a hostage and they had taken like six hostages uh, one of the hostages, one of the hostages was uh, Alana, um, Ross's daughter. She was six years old at the time. Um, and so what happened was, they escaped across the border, and as soon as they escaped, they killed all the hostages. And so, Ross decided that he requested to be a death seeker, which is someone who could leave the Nora land basically what happens is like the spirit stays within uh, all mother and the body can go on to seek death type of thing and okay. so he, he takes it's like a whole year trek but um, Mother Tirsa specifically mentioned that he went everywhere like he, he covered a, not, not like everywhere but like he covered a lot of land um, like the Banuk and the, uh, um, I forget some of the other tribe names uh, but she also mentioned that he even ventured into the Forbidden West. And then when he came back almost a year later, he was uh, uh, fairly wounded, but he was also delirious and in agony before he was pulled over to the Nora, uh, like across the border so that he could be healed. And um, by technically by law, he uh, he should have 
died where he was where he laid down and he was okay with that he just the reason why he even came back was so that he can die near his motherland type of thing but okay. the person that pulled him over was one that also lost, who she lost her husband and her son if i remember right to the bandits too so she didn't want to leave him there and so as a compromise what they did was he can live in the land but he could never talk about the fact that they made an exception and left like let him live there after becoming a death seeker so i thought that like i have been wanting to talk about this since the since the game came out so what was it like two years now um but i've always wondered like oh why why didn't they put much focus on ross's background on the fact that like this is a, a completely optional conversation if there was no cut scene or anything like that um and to me I, I as when i beat the game it made me think maybe the reason why is because they didn't want us to think too much about it um you know we we didn't we never found out who the bandits were we did find out ross killed them all we found out that they camped out at devil's thirst and there was sounds of strange noises which to me sounds like they were communing um with like or they were trying to commune with like Hades or you know the other AIs basically. Yeah. Um, and another thing too was that this happened before the Red Raids. Do you remember about the Red Raids in the story? Red Raids. Um, those it's... were the. Um... Oh God, I know this. Um, <laughs> I do know this one. Um. Oh, it refresh my memory. <laughs> <laughs> so the red raids in the story is basically a lot of what caused a lot of um, tension between tribes because the the Karja, uh, they had that Sun King who was like insane, and he thought that the derangement of the the machines was due to uh, well, it, it basically I don't know I don't remember the reason why he thought. Um, the reason, uh, the reason why he came up with it, but basically he was starting to, you know, they had the raids on the other tribes to sacrifice people yeah. to the sun uh, god to now. appease them, things, something like that. Yeah, yeah, they they would they would run into villages and kidnap a bunch of people to sacrifice to the yeah. sun god to to appease the gods. Yeah, yeah, and so now again, the bandits coming into Nora, the the Nora land or the All Mother, whatever they called it was before the Red Raids. So what I think happened was Rost, without knowing it, while he was pursuing these guys who was who was trying to find out more about um, these the, the AI machines and all that, he may have been inadvertently involved in reviving Hades. Or not reviving, but activating Hades before Hades started to kind of take over like Gaia. And Gaia eventually basically cloned Elizabeth uh, Sobek, which was Aloy. Right. right. So that, that's what I think uh, what Forbidden West will actually go through. Like, Aloy won't actually be, let's say, I don't think she's intentionally uh, tracking Ross's previous uh, movements because, you know, that's kind of you know, all done with, all co- sort of resolved in terms of Ross's storyline. Um, in terms of uh, everything she wants to know, but as she explores the West, um, I think it's going to be something that she'll, she'll come across and kind of see uh, events of through her focus. Yeah, it's very possible because I mean, we seen we seen at the end of the game that um, what's his name Silence yeah seemed to essentially capture the essence of, of Hades, Hades yeah. for and, lack of a better word. Yeah, honestly, I would have said the same thing. I was just like, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> Hades essence. Like, I mean, I know it's a machine that like, doesn't have a soul per se or anything like that, but that's the program? pretty much what like, <laughs> downloaded its programming. Yeah, it. more or less, yeah. And so, so I mean, he, he's mi- definitely up to something, and I'd be curious to see um, what exactly he's going to do with that, because if we're traveling west, the west is something like you said, you know, it's it's unknown. They don't know what's over there. Yeah. So maybe he knows where there's another Hades-like machine. I, I don't know whether what he's going for with that, though. Like, I know he's bringing Hades with him because for silence, you know, 
pursuing knowledge is his main thing. Like he just wants to know. Um, so I don't. I really don't know. Like I. It, I mean, it seems like he agrees that Hades shouldn't, you know, be around corrupting things. I. I I'm sure he understands that that's that's a problem. Um, and that's why he helped Aloy in the first place. That's why, uh, he stopped working with the Shadow Karja. Uh, uh, presumably. Well, I think, I think the big thing is he doesn't necessarily agree with how the Hades program works, but he wants that power for himself. That's probably true. That's probably true. And, you know, not, not going too much into Frozen Wilds, um, Silence does make a brief appearance. Per se, by voice, of course, he doesn't actually show up because Silence rarely shows up, um, okay. as it is in the main game. But uh, Aloy does ask the the Banuk um, about you know whether they know Silence, and they had mentioned before like he, yes, they do know of him. He has something of a legendary status, especially he does have some some legendary status to the Banuk, um, which they talk about uh, at the end of the DLC. Or closer okay. to the end of the DLC, um, and then there are other like, uh, what what other uh, concepts? I guess you can in, that were introduced in the DLC, such as Hephaestus and Cyan. But again, no, I mean I don't know if you even care at this point, but <laughs> <laughs> about the details of uh, the Frozen Wilds. Well, like you said, you never really know what might come into play for the next game. What didn't, you know, the Frozen Wilds may not have had an impact on the story of the first game, but that's not to say that it won't be, won't have something to do with the second game. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, g- games often do that. Like, you you find some optional stuff, and then it becomes, like, a main core thing that happens. Uh, oh, yeah. And There's I, a few times that's it, happened to me. Yeah. And, you know, they, sometimes they do it that way just so it's like, oh, you would know more about this if you played the DLC, but technically you don't need to know type of deal. Right. Yeah. All right. But, uh, yeah, he has a legendary status with the Banuk, um, and Aloy was just more, like, trying to find out because it's like, well, you know, Silence knows all this about me, but I really don't know much about Silence. And basically, by the end of it, by what you find out why he's legendary among the Banuk, it's not um, a flattering thing. So it's, it's not any kind of redeeming quality within Silence. It's just more... Terrible th- stuff he's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise yeah. me. Not, 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 not like on evil status, but it's still terrible. And yeah, know, prob- he's, probably... He's uh, definitely a selfish kind of guy. Yeah. And, you know, in regards to, like, you know, the way Aloy and Silence, because they know more of, you know, the old world, I guess. I think mm-hmm. that's what they called it. Uh, the way of things working. They don't actually believe in, like, you know, a lot of the religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs of uh, these tribes. Right. So, you know, um, in Aloy's case, she tries to respect it. But in Silent's case, he does not care. <laughs> He's like, I, don't, I, I know what you believe isn't right. So even if to you it's sacrilegious, um, I know that it's not. So I'm, I'm going to do it anyways type of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And but that's, that's kind of what I'm feeling like we're probably going to go into the West is because obviously Silence was there when Aloy found out about Project Zero Dawn. Yeah. So obviously we know that there's more of these, you know, biodome type situations. So I'm assuming that's what Silence's plan is. is He's thinking, well, if all this stuff is here, maybe if I go over there, I'll find a new thing. I'll reactivate that and I'll be able to control it better because I know what I'm doing now. Yeah, and like I just it just popped into my head too like maybe what if he ends up like actually trying to collect these AI programs the way he did with Hades just so he can have them all around, you know. Yeah, that yeah. wouldn't surprise me. He yeah. strikes me as the kind of guy that wants ultimate power just because it's there to grab. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if there's anything else to say about Horizon, but that's pretty much, you know, what I'm thinking. I, I'm thinking that uh, Aloy will inadvertently end up following Ross's path, finding out that Ross may have actually uh, unintentionally have maybe restarted Hades or have maybe somehow given him more power to basically overtake, like, 
all the other programs to all overtake Gaia and basically cause the derangement as well as Aloy's birth. I think I think it's a good like full circle type of deal. And interestingly enough, it makes Aloy so much more special because <laughs> I mean yeah. she's she's had basically so many different um parental figures at this point right like she basically she's had elizabeth because she is like a clone of elizabeth gaia um the all mothers and then rost would be if if this was actually something that comes to pass rost would actually be indirectly uh the reason why she was even born and he's the one that taught her how to fight i think that'd be and you know and and you make a good point too that could lend to the reason why he decided to raise her because he might know that you know it's kind of his fault that she popped up. I, I feel like he wouldn't know that. I actually feel like he wouldn't. Um, the only reason why is because uh, he's, he, he, he doesn't understand that much about machines. Um, I do think that is a reason why he's more biased against using the old relics or whatever they called it of the old, old world technology. Um, because uh, he's probably seen a lot of it when he you know, ventured out to chase these bandits. Um, but I, I feel like that part of it where he actually took in Aloy was because, you know, he's, it's, he lost his daughter and he's like raising another daughter. I, I mean, you could be right too, to be honest. I'm just, I'm thinking that's not it in this case though. Yeah. yeah. Well, the see, and that's the thing though, is like you said, we don't know what he saw out there. So for all we know, he went West and seen, you know, all this stuff that Aloy did and taught people how to do with the controlling machines and stuff like that. He might have found, a, you know, a whole group of people that already had control over machines and found out that those people were kind of not nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that might that might contribute to why he's so against the use of machines and whatnot is because he knows. It's, it's also, people, it's also um, that do that. against the Nora tribe beliefs, but he's very, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that's, that's such a core part of him. Like he's, very ingrained within the teachings of the Nora tribe and all mother. Yeah. yeah. Very, very, very true. Yeah. So I can't wait to find out. Um, I'm, I'm holding strong to this, that we will be inadvertently following Ross's trail and finding out that he was, uh, indirectly involved in a lot of, uh, like the derangement and, um, Aloy's birth. Okay. Uh, so then we also have the, um, uh, there there was something that was mentioned also in the the DLC that kind of caught my interest, and it was the idea that possibly and technically they didn't actually talk about it, but it kind of gave me it, it kind of put put the idea in my head that we'll probably meet other people that were like Aloy that were given birth um from you know the machine for various reasons. Um, do you have any comment on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, it would be bold of us to assume that Aloy was literally the only person born from a machine. Yeah. But honestly, I was thinking how crazy of a theory would, or how crazy of a concept would it be to find out that, like, Silence was actually, you know, born from the machines, too, which might explain why he has such a deep fascination with them. Now, you, you know what's funny that you mentioned that? Um, because I had been thinking about Ted Farrell. I don't know if you remember who that is. I'm sure you remember who it is by just the fact that I mentioned his name. Um, um yeah, yeah. It was the um, uh, he was the guy that uh, Sobek went to originally. That was supposed to be running the program, mm -hmm. and he was like super shady. <laughs> yeah, basically, he's the douchebag that basically ended up also killing everybody else that was recreating all these programs, and just like you know what. All this knowledge that we're going to impart on the people might be wrong. And so he ended up yeah. suffocating them all uh, by taking out the, closing out the oxygen when they were all in that room. Yeah. And he's the one who also created all the machines that uh, were eating biofuel and multiplying. So he's, yep. he's the main cause of the problem. Um, they had a small, re small, very small redeeming factor they went into with the DLC with him. In regards okay. to him, but uh, it was just one of those things. It was like, well, this is before he even made the machines type of deal. <clears throat> um, but yeah, like I, I had considered what, what if, silent, what, what if silence was like 
the recreation of Ted Farrell, kind of like Aloy was of Elizabeth Sobeck. Um, but I don't think that's the case. I really don't think that's the case. Um, it could be. It definitely could be. That would be really cool. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, even Silence believes that Ted Farrell was wrong by, by what he said. Um, well, after they found out yeah. about the truth. But see, uh, the, way, the way that Silence works, though, is he might not necessarily believe that he's wrong. He just thinks that he did it wrong and thinks that he could do it true. better. That is true. That, um, well, I, I think the way that Silence phrased it, I, 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 it's been a while. I, mean, I know it's been years. Uh, he, he, I think he said something in regards to the line of the fact that he thought that Ted Farrell was basically arrogant for believing that he himself would be the one to kind of make that judgment call above everybody else, you know? Um, yeah. But in that case, you would be also be right because um, let's say that he actually ended up collecting all these AIs. In that case, he has all this, all these, you know, old world technology, quote unquote, gods to consult with if he tried to do something new, right? Mm-hmm. So... In that case, he wouldn't be the same as Ted Farrell. Um, I don't think he is, though. To be honest, I think it would be cool. I kind of one. I kind of hope. Uh, two things. Uh, one I hope. One I think. Uh, well, one thing I think is that I don't think Ted Farrell had any kind of because he really did not contribute at all to uh, Project Zero Dawn. So I don't know if he has any kind of access or anything or you know dna samples that would have allowed anyone to clone him and then one thing i hope is that he is like like some kind of cryogenic pod or freezing or something so i kind of hope that he is in some way alive so that we can actually or aloy can converse with him and kick his teeth in because what an idiot like (laughs) (laughs) i do like i really just want oh my god like he's such an idiot that i was just like oh my god i hate this guy so much (laughs) yeah yeah i got a clown (laughs) yeah but anyways so we we will see um i don't know if there's a release date yet but it's probably i would say later end of this year or next year is my guess Uh, i'd count it out that late but you might be right yeah um, I was thinking like maybe summerish. Was that? Oh, you're thinking summer of this year? I was hoping so, or at least holiday season this year. Well, yeah, that's what I meant later this year. When I meant yeah. holiday season. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah okay. I, yeah, I can agree possibly. The only reason why I say possibly going into 2021 is because you never know how much COVID uh, affects like development time. Yeah, you're right. If but, we were only a couple months out from release, we would have definitely heard about it by now. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, if honestly, if it wasn't uh, for COVID, I would say by the end of this year uh because of covid i can see it being the end of the fiscal year which is march or even like the end of next year but right now my guess is somewhere between holiday season this year to the end of the fiscal year my guess um i I do think that sony is intentionally planning these releases spaced out but yeah um we're we're gonna be done with this now we'll have a distro and cash wrap uh, rejoining things i didn't mention it before i probably will later or again um but you know audio settings might change uh when there's you know all four of us or uh, i know that also cyrus does need to leave at some point so no i'm uh, good actually oh are you yeah i'm where i'm supposed to be so <laughs> my plans my plans for today actually got moved till last night so i just kind of okay. came over to my friend's house early last night so i'm yeah i don't need to worry about packing up or getting ready to go right now. oh so okay for that. sure all right cool <laughs> for at least for the discussion with the horizon we're gonna cut off here and then we'll have cash wrap and distro and we're gonna talk about the other games hey how's it going everybody welcome back to another closing staff podcast the first of 2021 you know before any kind of introductions i just want to thank anybody that listens to us anybody that's been following us but before anything I'm going to go and pass it over to my fellow co-hosts. We have my fellow friend in the corner. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Trade hole right here. 
What's in the corner. <laughs> I, 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 I do spend a lot of time with myself in the corner. In the yeah. corner. Yeah. yeah. I, I usually uh, am left out, so I'm okay. Yeah. That's all right. And then, oh, and then, and then, in the other sad. corner, we got we got my other co-host. We're, we're all in corners today. Yeah, we're all in corners today, <laughs> facing the corners. Facing the corners, exactly. Because we're all in trouble. Introduce yourself to the people. Uh, cash wrap here, of course. After a long, I felt like uh, he raised his voice because he I just remembered that he was <laughs> cash wrap. Like, like, <laughs> which name? Am oh I yeah, in? that's right. Cash wrap. Yeah, right. cash wrap is me, and, and I am cash wrap. And this is Distro, and if you're wondering why we're in corners, why it took us so long to post up an episode, is because we've been traversing the different realms. All nine realms. Right now, we are sitting in Moosefilheim, but we are joined by some really awesome, or a really awesome guest, straight from the other realm, Niflheim. We have Cyrus. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, guys. How about you? Doing, doing great, man. I know it's really hot over here. You know, I know, I know they have uh, fire giants, but you know, we're 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 chilling. We're chilling. Maybe, sir, we're hanging out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you know, we're 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 just chilling. So for this episode today, we're gonna get into some PlayStation exclusives. You know, some PlayStation, uh, you know, new releases that are gonna be coming up in 2021 some or into sequels, the future. Yeah. Part some of sequels. Our, part of our game talk series. Yeah, part yes. of the game talk series. You know, before anything as well, in the beginning of the episode, you may hear a side talk that we have with Cyrus and with uh, Trade Hold as well, where they go into Horizon. Me and Cash Rap, you know, we have a bit of a backlog. We know how it goes, but we're going to go into Horizon maybe in a later date. But, you know, stay tuned for that. But for today, we're going to get into some exclusives. We're going to get into God of War. We're going to get into Spider-Man. You know, it's going to be really good, guys. And I know we all recently just played these games. So yeah. Yeah. I know we're all really excited about well, it. Well, actually, yeah. for me, it's been a few years. Oh, but yeah, I, still, so. I remember these <laughs> Yeah. So. And especially with these titles, too. They have such good content oh, and yeah. such rich stories that I oh, feel yeah. like, like the, when, it all sticks with you. you know? When we were talking about doing uh, this episode... I'm over here like, man, I want to play through New Game Plus for God of War right now. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Again. Yeah. That's when you know when you're going through a New Game Plus and it still feels good. Yeah. And it's not just like, fuck this. That's when you know. <laughs> just, yeah. That's when you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, before anything, as far as exclusives go, I know we've been talking about Resident Evil Village. I know that's been looking really good. Is mm -hmm. there a formal release date for that? Do we know? I don't know, but I know there's a big showcase coming up on the 21st. Yes, and um, I heard they just released, I believe, an Avatar. You know, on the PlayStation Network, mm -hmm. for anybody that's interested, you can download that. They, uh, I, yeah. I know that mm -hmm. Capcom was sending out you know, emails. I actually received one of uh, joining a closed beta, but it was so weird because <laughs> they didn't specify what closed beta. I'm like, what am I joining a closed beta yeah. for? And I'm like, okay, it could be the village, but it could be, you know, some kind of resistance. Is that what it was called? Resistance. Well, the, the update. showcase that's coming up is more than just village. They say there's going to be some related Resident yeah. Evil announcements too. And then on so. top of that, when uh, when I was getting that email, there were people who were talking about um, uh, private viewings for uh, the Resident Evil series. Oh, really? So I was just like, was yeah. that the closed beta? Like, that's, that's coming up <laughs> that's, too. That can't be a closed beta. That's a show. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was really confused when I got that. I'm like, well. <laughs> and then on top of that, when I went into it, because I'm part of the um, Capcom out of Resident Evil thing that they got going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you click to click on a few links, and it takes you to the official uh, Capcom Japanese site. And I'm just like, I can't read this. I'm not even going to bother. So, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, you're you know? just like, you know what? Yeah, cool. Cool news, yeah. right? Thanks. Sounds good for anyone. Cool Congratulations news. for getting in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Well, it's like, I remember even that release. I was like, is this Resident Evil? Is this Resident Evil? And then it popped up. I'm like, Village. And then they did that clever thing where it's just like seven, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're like, oh, man. Yeah, we have that. And then I know with you guys talking about Horizon, we can't, you know, help but mention Horizons. You know, Horizon 2 essentially coming out. That's Forbidden looking, West. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking really badass. I just recently started playing through Horizon just so that I can formally pass through everything so I can get into the second one. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. You know, but before anything, we, we tried inviting J. Jonah Jameson onto the podcast today, but he said it was too hot. He was complaining <laughs> about all these things happening in the city, you know, like he, he was way too busy with Spider-Man. But, you know, I know that's going to be one of the first topics we want to get into, right? Yeah. You know, be I, I'd be interested. Uh, I mean, he'd probably blow a gasket if you found out that he was... That we were talking about Spider-Man, like in a good way. Good. Kratos, <laughs> Kratos. <laughs> no, yeah, like I, I love Jay Joe, and I'm glad he has his own podcast. Power to you, man. <laughs> but besides that, guys, you know, going into Spider-Man, well, just getting into before we get into the game itself, like, what's your guys' previous history with the character? Like, were you guys fans? Like, you yes. know, when the cartoon um, was in the '90s, do you like the comics? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we'll, we'll go, we'll go totally. to your first you cash rep. Well, how how yeah. do you feel about Spider-Man before anything? No, I totally grew up with Spider-Man. The show. Um classic show 90s show was the one that i kind of grew up with and then yeah, right. 
you kind of go back through and see like the history of Spider-Man on TV, and then uh, like all the video games, Super Nintendo, Maximum yeah, right. Carnage, and all those games, you know. Maximum um, Carnage. Oh, and then, yeah, that's uh, a hard game. <laughs> yeah, that one was really hard, actually. I love that but, one. Um, and then the movies, you know, came around. Tobey Maguire kind of brought it back to sort of prestige superhero fair, you know. Yeah, on, right. On the silver screen. Um, and uh, yeah, but I, I don't, I don't think I kind of continued on when you know they kind of brought in a lot of these supplementary characters to we say like the spider gwen or like the the miles morales spider gwen miles morales the multiverse like i didn't really that was kind of after my -hmm. interest in you'd say peter parker is your spider-man peter parker is like first and foremost the (laughs) spider-man for me other than that who's that the what's the the original one what's his name ben something i don't know wait the the other, the other no, no, Spider Man. No, no, um, he's not the original. You're talking about the clone. The clone, yeah. Uh, ben Riley. Ben Riley, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I kind of started learning a little bit about him, but I think All when right. I started learning about how expansive this character can be, is when things got a little, a little crazy, right? A little crazy for me. <laughs> so see, I'll, I'll send it over to Niflheim. You know, we 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 got Cyrus on. You know, what's what's your previous history with Spider Man? Um. Uh... Long-time fan, I can't say I'm, you know, a kind of expert on the subject or anything like that. I mean, the 90s series, pretty much every one of the video games. Yeah, but you don't go deep into the lore or anything, right? Uh, not super deep. I'm a little bit deep. (laughs) (laughs) Just just, just a little little deep, deep. you know? I think for for me, too, like for the Spider-Man series, and this, this is kind of how I feel about like a lot of the comic stuff, it's the villains that really draw me in. Oh no, yeah, for and sure. And the 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 gallery of of villains in Spider Man series mm-hmm. is is in a lot of ways more compelling than Spider Man himself. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. People make the argument that Spider Man has the best villains. Yeah, yeah, he's just got a varied cast of of just these outlandish, you know, characters mm-hmm. that that some of them bounce back and forth. Some of them are pure bad, you know, and it's like. I think that is probably where I've, like, kept up with it. Like, finding out if Sinister Six is going to play a part in some of these games or finding out if, Mm -hmm. you know, Morbius and that movie coming. Like, that's kind of what what keeps me drawn into the the Spider-Verse, I think. So, I don't know too much about, like, the upcoming games, but I'm actually kind of interested to see what you guys think as far as, like, villains showing up. Yeah, right? So. Um. I mean, the way that Cash Rap put it, it almost sounds like something a villain would say. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And and I see you changing trade hold. You know, you're over there. You know, what what was your previous history with Spider-Man? So I'm not big. I'm not super big into superheroes in general. But Spider-Man was my favorite superhero. Is still one of my favorite superheroes. Um, I I mentioned it before. My favorite superheroes, or I don't know if you, some of them can be be considered superheroes, are Spider-Man, Batman, Wolverine, Spawn. Uh, nice. Ghost Rider, I actually like too. Um, there might be one more I'm forgetting, I'm sure. But man, that would be an ones... awesome MVC lineup, though. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, no. Um, so I, but Spider Man was one of my earlier ones. I used to watch the cartoons. I did read the comics. Yeah, which I like. It Spider Man. I I really like when a perspective is new. Um, but like my brother was big into Superman. But I wasn't because I was just mm-hmm. like, well, he can do anything. There's, mm-hmm. I mean, and this, he, he beats up superhero, uh, super villains and he's done. Yeah. And the thing that I remember uh, getting a comic from one of my elementary uh, school friends with Spider-Man. And the comic that it talked about was like he was just reflecting on how, you know, with great uh, power comes great responsibility. And yeah. how he would go and, you know, fight a super villain, come back home. And had to try to lead a normal life type of deal, and yeah. that whole balance, and how not not every superhero has this glamorous life of just mm-hmm. doing whatever. Yeah. Like, even the fact that he does all these great things when he comes back, he lives a more somewhat below average life. Right. Until he gets to like his later years when he's like into um, ESU, and mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. he actually goes beyond that. Yeah. Uh, so I am fairly well versed when it comes to Spider Man. But I'm I probably don't know anywhere near as close as like a fanatic. Yeah, um, I yeah, right. Like most of the Spider-Man games, Maximum Carnage is one of my favorites. I yeah. actually 
I, I'm i one of those people who wants the... I don't know if you guys are familiar, but they had a collector's edition of... Limited collector's edition of yeah. Maximum Carnage. I want one of those. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And it's, I think it's actually signed by Stan Lee with a, like a wow. certificate and everything too. Oh, anyway. nice. Sweet. Um, and I've played most of the Spider-Man games. I usually can look at them mm-hmm. like that one's going to be a good one. <laughs> I, I, I promote the hell out of Shattered Dimensions. I'm like, dude, that yeah. one's going to be the Spider-Man game. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then when uh, yeah. the one, what was the one that came after that? Edge uh, of Time, I think. Edge of Time. When I looked at that one, I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, thank yeah. you, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I'm very much a Spider-Man fan. I actually just noticed that this show is wearing a Spider-Man. Like, oh, no, yeah. Sure. You know, I'm, 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 I got, I got, a, I got a rep my, my oh, dude, here. but the best mm, characters, perfect. look at that, you know, yeah, with, best with, characters, with, with one of my characters. favorites from, from when I was a Carnage kid, and Venom favorites. facing off, but yeah, but that being said, getting into this game, you know, with Insomniac, Insomniac does a lot of good stuff. Hey and man, then, you didn't get to talk about your history with Spider Man. Well, my history with Spider Man, well, same deal, guys. Like <laughs> Ice, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm gonna stop I, you there. Tell us your well, history first. <laughs> so I watched the cartoon when I was a kid mm-hmm. all the time, you know. And then even beforehand, I never had a lot of the books because my parents, you know, were very old school Hispanic. So they never went through and actually like Mm -hmm. would I'd be like, I want a comic book and be like, you're tripping. Mm -hmm. So then kind of main thing was because like we wouldn't go to shops or anything like that where they'd sell comics. So it was hard for me to get them. So it was a lot of secondhand comics I'd get from friends or from like my brother because he was older and stuff. Yeah. And there was all these Marvel trading cards that we'd have back in the day in the 90s. I don't know if you guys remember (laughs) them. Where it'd be the character on the front, and on the back it was their bio with like their character Dude, name, their stats. My and, brother like... collected those. I, actually, <laughs> yeah, right? I think we still have a binder with some of those. With cards. like all of them, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, I remember it would go through, and then I'd have like a bunch of the Spider-Man ones. So you'd see like all the different villains, like Carnage, Venom, Scorpion, you know, like even Hobgoblin, you know. <laughs> you go into Rhino, like everybody, and it's like their real name, like their description, like what they do, what their power is, right? And I'd always yeah. go through there, and I was always super interested. And then I remember, like, before then, like, yeah, Maximum Carnage, I remember playing that game and getting super upset. You know, I remember playing, you know, the, like, I remember when the movie came out and being super stoked and going to see it and, like, being like, oh, my God, yeah. we're going to see Green Goblin. And he looks all, like, you know, he, he looks very, let's say, interesting, you know, to say the least. <laughs> but, yeah, like, just a lot of the hype, I could honestly say, thinking back to it, Spider-Man's got to be in my top three favorite superheroes yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, just with the nostalgia factor. Even his power, like his, his just his abilities are crazy, you know. Like he has. It some is really very good interesting. Stuff, you know? Yeah, even when I was a kid, I was just like, "Huh, what's so interesting about a you know someone with powers of spider?" Yeah, and then you realize mm-hmm. what cool stuff like spiders, like the 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 traits the that spiders have. Yeah, like yeah. spider sense. You know, you got That's like all this pretty different sweet, stuff. Like, actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, all that stuff really drew me into Spider Man. Same thing with you. Is so he was just an average Joe too. Like he was like somebody who his was still story. a high school kid. Yeah, younger. You know, maybe young adult finding a job you know mm-hmm. all this different stuff like he's not the most popular kid you know so that's why I like i don't like when they portray peter parker too cool because he's not cool at all yeah you he's know really he's not. he's and really well, not you know he's not well, confident he, either you know well, he, he becomes that way and, yeah, it, yeah he progresses but if he's in high school you know <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you shouldn't yeah. have a a peter parker that's skateboarding you know like <laughs> yeah. doing a bunch of like, up to no good you know like he's already got the girl <laughs> you know, yeah, like, right, yeah stuff like that you know, yeah, you know like, one of my buddies uh he he talks about how boring peter parker is and he's like i like i like my, miles morales that's what he says you know it's like mm-hmm. miles morales is a really interesting character i'm like we had to realize peter parker came out in 1980s right and miles mm-hmm. morales came out in 2011 yeah so of course, you at this point you know his history. You're bored yeah, with him. It's more right? modern too. But you know? I, back then, that's that was interesting because it's like, yeah, no, he's a superhero, but yeah. he lives a very normal life. Yeah, he's like the most human superhero, in the fact that after he, after he takes off the superhero costume, he's very human. Yeah, he's and, not like a Tony Stark. Who's, yeah, exactly. Oh, he's also like this billionaire exactly, scientist. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so like getting into the game now, like too, you know. With... Well, the it, well the the thing that I was going to segue from that What's is, I mean, it's very clear that Spider Man was a pretty big part of our like growing up period, mm-hmm. and we kind of have him as one of our top superheroes. Yeah. So you know, taking it back to the time where you know rumors were rumbling that Insomniac was going to be making a Spider Man game, like what were what were you guys thinking when you kind of heard like damn like that's a legit developer mm-hmm. they're partnering with the biggest publisher in sony it's an exclusive 
Like, what were the thoughts that were out with you guys when you kind of heard, like, the rumblings that that was going to happen? I was immediately excited. Yeah. I was immediately excited. I'm like, oh, another Spider-Man game by yeah. Insomniac? I'm I'm so down. And I mean, by that time, like, mm-hmm. what were the last Spider-Man games we had? And, and were, like, what was the last, like, truly good Spider-Man game? Yeah, right? Know? I yeah. think for me, it was probably Spider-Man 2. <laughs> yeah, I was to say Spider-Man 2, yeah. You know, like, uh, that was the classic Spider-Man For game. me, it was... Uh, between Shattered Dimensions and Web of Shadows. But, yeah, those But ones... next-gen Web of Shadows, not the... Uh, I mean, not next-gen, but the uh, the console ones as opposed to the handheld ones. The handhelds, <laughs> yeah. That's right, because they had a lot of handheld ports yeah, back then. Yeah, that wasn't the same, mm-hmm. yeah. What, what about um, you, Cyrus? What was, what was your... Um, honestly, uh, I'd probably have to agree with um, Shattered Dimensions or um, probably the last really, really good one that I fully enjoyed was the... Um, it was uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate, yeah. yeah. For PS2. That yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. I would say, like, before Shadow Dimensions, that would be the one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You see, what got me really excited for the Spider-Man that got announced for Insomniac was a lot of people didn't get a chance to play it, or a lot of people didn't pay a lot of attention to it, but they did Sunset Overdrive. Yeah. And then the yeah. movement in that game, and the way that yeah. game flowed, and then the way they did the grinding system and everything like that, yeah. like, I was like, holy fuck, I'm going to be Spider-Man. You yeah. know, like with this, probably this system, but even better to where they're going to make it to where you can just flow through the city. You're able to just swing everywhere. Like they're going to have all these cause the customization in that game was crazy. Yeah. Like, it was. you know, and they had like great colors, great graphics, you the, know, like the, the design and concept of the weapons and the, and the, the art design in it. Yeah. Right. So just... then like when I heard they were going to do a Spider-Man, I was like, that makes perfect sense. Cause what they're going to do is they're going to incorporate all of his gadgets. Mm-hmm. They're going to yeah. incorporate his different web shooters. He's going to incorporate like his abilities, the, city, the open world, like the city, style. the open world. They're going to yeah. get all this budget, you know, where it's a Sony exclusive and they're going to basically go through and just, yeah. just knock it out of the park. I was like, Oh man, this is, and the, this, this makes me really excited, you know, because that game was was actually really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and the 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 fact that Sony made it a core part of their showcase at that E three was when mm-hmm. I think everyone was kind of thinking, well, it's not too often you see a licensed superhero game in you know a, one of the three publishers' main events. So, yeah, right. You know, I think that kind of like set the stage for something pretty special. And uh, yeah, just like trade hold, I was kind of thinking, oh man, this is gonna, this is gonna upend what we think about licensed, you know. I think what was it the E three was it two thousand seventeen? I think it was seventeen, yeah. Um, because I actually was there at that one. Yeah. I think I think that's also when they were showing off Ghost of Tsushima and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember walking out and thinking, honestly, Spider Man looks like the best game. <laughs> yeah. And, right. You know, no, no offense to the other games because they all look great too. But when I was looking, I was like, dude, Spider Man looks like the best game yeah. out there, dude. Yeah. And a lot of my friends were like, yeah, no, it looks cool. But to them, it's like, oh, this is another superhero game. Yeah. Right. Then once once the game hit the shelves, oh, dude, everyone was just like, oh mm-hmm. my god, this might be the best superhero game ever made. Yeah. Like, I've been saying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. With that too, su- surprisingly, it was in my back catalog for a little while, uh-huh. and I just recently got through and played it platinum all. You know, the game, hundred percent, all the DLCs and everything. Yeah. And surprisingly enough, same deal. Like I didn't have any of it spoiled for me. So going through, like I was actually fresh when I picked it up. You know, I was able to go through and really enjoy it the way I wanted yeah, to. Right. As opposed to people being like, "Oh no, this happened," because working at GameStop, like you already know, people spoil everything, <laughs> everything. for you. There's a lot of games that I wanted to play where I'm just like, "Well, fuck!" Now I'm just gonna waiting for this to happen. <laughs> you know, but especially with Spider-Man, like that was a game where it really got me, like, really made me happy that I was able to experience everything. And what was really cool I wanted to bring up too is they did the whole collector's edition where. You don't look at the statue until you finish the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. right. You yeah. remember when they did that? Yeah, like, I mean, of course. I, I right. that. Was, that was really cool. Even though the statue, when I finally looked at it, was all right. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it, was, it, it looked It was cool, but it wasn't, it, looked... it wasn't like, you know, I was expecting something crazy, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think I blew it up more than it was. <laughs> well, but, yeah, that's what it is because when, when you prevent people from looking at it, they're, they're hyped. Yeah. What's in the box? Yeah. I mean, they specifically say it's for spoiler reasons, but because you don't see it, yeah. you just expect more things, yeah. that be- bigger, better things type of things. Yeah, and... but like even like all that stuff, that wasn't spoiled for me, so I was able to get the full experience or I was able to beat the game and then look up the statue because I didn't have the collectors. Yeah. Oh. But then you're like, I was like, what was the statue? You know? Yeah, looking over. <laughs> no, I... Uh... It's it was funny because I was when once I finally looked at it after I beat the game I'm like what's the problem with this and I realized by the way this is pretty obvious but this is at all gonna be a lot of spoiler talk you know I was about to say no <laughs> yeah we're getting the we're getting into spoiler alert territory yeah yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put that in the description but I was like this this to me when we were watching the trailer I was like well this looks like Sinister Six so. Mm-hmm. It's obvious that Doc Ock's gonna be a part of it, right? Right. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so to me, I was just like, "This is not a big spoiler." 
but I guess they don't actually show them. Right. So people didn't really expect it. They, but they showed the other ones. They so showed the other like, ones. Yeah. Who else? Who else, yeah, right, yeah. Who who else is in there? But again, <laughs> if you're not super into Spider-Man, you probably wouldn't know, right? Yeah. You see, playing the game and the way they did the story, in all honesty, I... The story was a little bit lukewarm for me personally. Yeah. Just because I feel like the Martin Lee stuff was a little bit forced and it was just kind of in there just because. And I feel like the real core of the story was Dr. Octavius. Yeah. And like his relationship with Peter Parker and then like Peter kind of just realizing that Octavius is fucking him over, you know, like right. little by little, like he's losing that trust, you know, and all these well, things. Well, I, I actually think, I mean, I can understand what you're talking about, but I think mm-hmm. they did it well because that was something that. You was more observing on the side, so you had to have Spider Man going after something. Yeah, you had him going after something. My thing and is, Mister like... Negative, he's cool and all, but if we're going after Sinister Six as well, you know, like <laughs> they're actually replacing Craven the Hunter with freaking, yeah. you know, Mister Sinister. So they're completely wiping out, you know, like yeah, but Craven the Hunter. I do think that they were also trying to build on um, on May, yeah, and right? the whole mm-hmm. shelter. Yeah, you yeah. know, and then like the whole the whole shelter thing and everything. Like, I understand it. I'm just personally saying that like I wasn't a big fan of it. Yeah. yeah. Like I felt like it was the story there was a little bit a little bit lukewarm in some senses, you mm-hmm. know. Because going back and playing through the new game plus and actually just playing only the story, yeah. I can see where they're kind of just rushing through a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know? Getting if it. if it was like a Martin Lee story and they made a full fledged story out of it oh, in the yeah. game, I feel like it would have been really good with the feast and all that stuff. Yeah. But the fact that it was like I feel like there was a lot of things going on. And then they were also trying to shoehorn the Miles Morales right underneath as well. <laughs> where they're like, real quick, let me just kind of just like give you that Miles Morales segue because you know it's coming anyway. And you know it's coming, right. You know, and they're like, all right, well, we're going to do that whole thing where we have to spider bite him and so forth. And like, I mean, I do think that it was good that they used her, mm-hmm. Mr. Negative because I feel like a lot of people don't know him. Mm-hmm. And that's true too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right? true. You see, that's my, my thoughts on the story, but I really liked how everything at the really end, everything just kind of clashed together. Man, that yeah. the like, ending was so strong. Dude. Yeah. I was just like, oh my god, this is killing me. I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you walk through, you start seeing like Octavius's plans like on the walls oh, and yeah. stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you're just like, yeah. why is that. he using syringes? You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. <laughs> I every every time I walked in back into that the that lab. Um, I walked mm-hmm. all around it, and I was, and I would get all the comments from Peter, yeah. and I'm just like, and there was always something new too, even if you couldn't interact with it. Yeah, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. that was just really cool. Like you know, as Spider-Man fans, you already know what's gonna happen with that. So like, you're just trying to figure out the transition. Like you're just looking <laughs> yeah. at like, let's see what Peter says. Let's, let's see what what are we thinking is going on? Here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how are they gonna get there? Because yeah. what what amazes me about the game myself, you know, as far as just my experience with it. Was I know you know I feel like I know a good amount about Spider Man and lore and so forth, but playing the game and actually going through and completing the game 100. percent Most of the time, I realized I was actually just playing the game, just swinging through the city, just really interacting with people, landing on the ground, doing little things, you know, that like I didn't even realize I was doing mm-hmm. just because I was on autopilot, you know. Yeah. And the game was just so fun to play. Yeah. And even going through and just doing like little challenges and stuff, like going through and doing some of the challenges, it felt like I wanted to keep doing them. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel tedious. Yeah. And then by the time I got to the story, I felt like I was just like, okay, like, and there's a story. And there's a story. You know, so like, I'm the kind of person in those games that likes getting my bearings for about two days where I just don't really do too much. I'm just collecting things. I spent the first day collecting all the backpacks, you know, like looking at all the lookouts. (laughs) Oh, I did all that. You know, because at first, like, people were telling me like, oh, it's too fast for me sometimes. You know, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, after about 30 minutes, I was flying through the city. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. And then, like, you really get the gameplay done. I almost down. never use fast travel. I'm like, dude, this is way too fun. Yeah, it's yeah. way too fun, you know? Oh, and you're God. sitting there and you're playing. So by the time I got to, like, let's say the story, that's where I felt. I'm like, oh, man, yeah. Like, everything kind of wraps up together. Yeah. You know, because gameplay, it felt more of, like, in, like if you're familiar with the Arkham series, like, kind yeah. of that. Or yeah. just, like, an Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Or yeah. something where that, where it's kind of, like, Definitely. you get that, uh... You get that alert to dodge, you know, or like, you know, you're basically building up a meter. How did you guys feel about the gameplay? Yeah, I forgot that, um, the name of that combat system that they have, but that's a commonly used one. Yeah, it's commonly games. used, uh, you know, thing yeah. that they do, yeah. I forgot they have a name for that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the gameplay was, oh, was something great. something with a countering or something. I, th- I want, yeah, I want to yeah. say it's like freeform combat oh, or something be, yeah, like that. Oh, it might be, yeah, I think that sounds about um, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Yeah, gameplay wise, I thought it was. It, it, go, it kind of goes back to what you talked about with Sunset Overdrive. Like it mm-hmm. had a struck struck a nice balance, you know, between, um, you know, like an intricate combo system. So it kind of had like a fighting <laughs> game um, element to it, where you know, if you were a casual gamer, you can pick it up and feel like Spider Man. But if yeah, you really right. put time into it, you can you know, kind of put together some pretty awesome sequences. Um, yeah, right 
so yeah, I I I thought the gameplay was was awesome. Mm-hmm. Actually, I thought it was. What was great. What was your favorite gadget? Like you know, was the web shooter? You know, first? actually, after I remember going through it and after unlocking them one after another, I always just used the basic one. Like I I just kind of went shooter? just the web the shooter. basic web shooter. Yeah, right? I kind of yeah. just always fully went back upgraded. To that. You know, fully upgraded okay. web shooter. The utility and the simplicity of it was just spot on. So mm-hmm. like I would unlock these and I try them out. But I'd always end up back with the classic web shooter, man. Yeah, right. You can tell how classic-minded I am. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't need all these gadgets, and I also don't need Miles. Just yeah, right, Peter. Yeah, like, <laughs> yes. And I also don't need Miles. Well, you know what? Now that you mentioned Miles, actually, because our main segment is, you know, going to be talking about the uh, the sequels. Yeah. We should probably get into that. But you know, speaking of, I know you didn't play Miles Morales. I have not mm-hmm. gone on to. Miles Do you have Morales any interest yet. at all playing Miles? Morales? Yeah, I I I want to go on to it, and I know. Um, on uh, PS5, they had it out with the remastered mm-hmm. version. The Ultimate Edition, yeah. And I, I actually do want to go back and play the remastered version of Spider-Man 2. Just be aware that they changed Peter Parker's. Yes, I do know that his face changed. So. I don't know why, but it pisses me <laughs> off. Um, well, it pissed a lot of people off. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give it a chance, but I can't get over the fact that... Because you see his new face in Miles Morales. Oh, so I'm okay. like, I can't make that connection yet, yeah. personally. And yeah. to me, he looks, he, he looks too, um, he doesn't look as real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure, I know they fa- they gave him face model of the actual actor, the, yeah. the new actor they gave him. But I'm like, he doesn't look as real as the original Peter Parker. Like, I, I guess the face model looks too perfect. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Mm-hmm. you see more imperfections with the original. With the original yeah. actor. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel, I'm like, with him, like, I'm... I, I, again, once I go through the remaster, I get the ultimate edition for the PS5. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'll give it a chance. I, I don't want to rule it out completely. Yeah. You know, um, I don't I don't like mm-hmm. Pete when people just go after an actor <laughs> because he took up that job. Like that's there's no right. point in that. Yeah. But still, I I still say right now, original Peter. Original. You know? Yeah, I, I vote original for Peter free. too because continuity wise, like I had just played all through the first yeah. Spider Man, <laughs> and right. then I jumped right into Miles Morales. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> why did they change this? <laughs> like, why did they change it? Okay, so uh, going off of because uh, Miles Morales is really more of a expansion side story type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think will happen in the next? Like, how do you think they're gonna go into the next Spider Man game? Like, what? They're gonna have. I'm sure they're gonna have minor villains that start off with like uh, Fisk in mm-hmm. the first one, mm-hmm. and then they'll have like a more introductory villain like uh, Mister Negative yeah. before yeah. they go into like a big villain, you know, yeah, like right. uh, Doctor Ock. Well, so. I mean, if they if they left out, if they were going really after a sinister stick story in the mm-hmm. in the first Spider Man, but they kind of like what you said, Distro replaced Craven with negative if that's what they were going for yeah then do you introduce craven now because he's kind of the you ultimate could. adversary for Be- you know because i know in the, if you remember guys but there's a moment like when you're going through the challenges and stuff where you're doing the taskmaster stuff like yeah. you get hit with a bolo and you yep. fall through in the park yep. yeah i thought it was craven the hunter i was like oh shit like yeah <laughs> Here let's he go. Is. yeah like he's gonna freaking hunt me down i was like oh no it's taskmaster i was like okay well like <laughs> right, kind of well. you know that's why i was just like all right well it's cool you're like, I get it, you know, like he I got mean, I hired. You know, Taskmaster yeah. at that point, but yeah. yeah. No, I know what you mean, you know, like, but at the same time, I was just like that little bit where I'm just like, oh, Craven really isn't going to be in this one. Yeah. But, you know, for anybody out there, like we said, major spoiler alerts, you know, if we all finish. Uh, I'll put it in the description. You know, yeah, this, if is, this is all speculating yeah. on the and next this, game. And so. this is for you, Cash Rap, as well. So at the end of Miles Morales, you get the final credit scene, right? Where it's mm-hmm. basically, if you remember, Harry Osborne has his son in the tube, right? Yeah. He has him no, in no, the. In mean, the uh, Norman has. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Has Norman has uh, in has Harry tube. in the tube, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So at the end of Miles Morales, basically after the credits and everything passes, right? It's uh, it's Norman walking in, and he basically goes up to the scientist. He's just like, I want him out right now, <laughs> and he's just like, No, this could affect his personality. This can affect <laughs> this, this, and that. Up, yeah. And he's just like, No, I don't care. He's had enough time in there. Like, pull him out. And yeah. you're you're from the point of view from Harry in the tube. So you're just moving, oh, so you're, you're kind of just looking around. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm pretty sure they're leading up to Green Goblin. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, it's like they got to be doing Green Goblin. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah some people you know what I mean. That, yeah. Like, that and if even if you look around the museum, you see his glider, like for the drones oh, and yeah. stuff. Like, oh, you yeah. actually yeah, yeah. see Green Goblin's glider in there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this is like, I'm pretty sure they have character models for all the villains. Yeah, <laughs> like if I was Insomniac, I would have made character models for everybody, right. just so that when the sequel comes in, we can just plug whoever we want in there. You know, like, yeah. 
Because I was expecting, like, I was like, like, it'd be too good to be true to get a symbiote, like, freaking, you know, like, end credit thing. Yeah, now, is it too like, soon say, for that? I'll or? say I'll say right now, I'm going to go last because I will you know, just yeah. go into this. You, know, you won't even know. <laughs> no, yeah, so, so let's go, it's, it's not let's too hear. soon, but going into, like, Miles Morales, right, which was yeah, yeah. really cool, was his movesets were completely different. I yeah. actually preferred playing as Miles, you know, going into it, yeah. just for, from a gameplay standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. gameplay was way better. Like, I like the Venom system way better, you know? Like, mm-hmm. and it showed that you can incorporate Spider Man's abilities with, mm-hmm. like, a new kind of, like, yeah. Kind of, like, a completely different person and make it feel like it's Miles. Feel like, like a it different... doesn't feel like a copy and pasted right. computer, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, to your guys' point, like, if they do do something with, like, a symbiote, like, imagine if you got the black suit. Yeah. And then, like, he gets not just, like, not a Venom system, but he has, like, a symbiote yeah. meter or something mm-hmm. like that, where it's, like, he can just fuck shit up. Yeah. And then at that point, you know, like, you can totally incorporate Venom. You can totally incorporate Carnage, you know? Yeah. And then it would be really cool if you could do, like, a Switch system. Like, GTA is the only game that's really made this work. But, like, imagine if you could play as Peter and then swap over to Miles and right. each have, like, their own thing. Mm-hmm. Right. You Like, I feel like that'd be badass. Because mm-hmm. before, you'd play, like, a Sonic Adventure 2. You had, like, the dark story and you had, like, the light story, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. and you just play through them and they all intertwine. Yeah. Imagine having something like that, but for, like, a Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just yeah. me. You yeah. Know? Well, that's... uh, okay. Sounds good. I think uh, we should... Let's hear from uh, Cyrus real quick. What do you think about uh, what they might do in the next game? Yeah. Oh, well... I, honestly, I think the next game is going to have a symbiote in it. You think they'll they'll and, bring them um, out? They'll bring them out. Well, now? It, I was really curious about it too because, well, like um, like you were mentioning, uh, it shows Harry at the end in the in the tank, but it seems to you can you can see like there's some like black ooze in that tank too. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it hits the glass and reacts to Norman's hand. So I'm just like, is he going hobgoblin or is he going venom? Like right. we getting like some sort of weird new mm-hmm. hybrid maybe? Yeah. I can see that kind of upping the stakes and making a hybrid goblin with a symbiote suit. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be nuts. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, beyond that, um, I'm hoping it would be pretty cool to get like a co-op Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah. Fly, you know, swing around the city with your buddy. See, there we go. Miles, yeah, a, Peter, a co-op. Be sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and, and... A dream scenario that I thought would actually be really cool yeah. is if. Um, we incorporated both Venom and Carnage, and each Spider-Man wound up with one symbiote. So we got like a Venom versus Carnage situation, but yeah. it's really Peter versus Miles. Yeah. Like, but that's just that's just a fantasy situation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think you're too far off. I though. honestly don't think you're. I don't that think far, so. Well, what I have to say, you you, it's it's kind of mm. in there. But so yeah, th- th- there's some there's some interesting things going on. On the like on the outer edges of like superhero media and, and kind of how we consume hero stories, so yeah. you look at what you look at what WB is doing with the Arkham games. They're coming out with Gotham Knights. It's a game that doesn't have Batman in it, mm-hmm. but it's a four player co op game. You know, so the idea of co op in superhero games is now like that's a yeah, real right. thing. And then you know now that you have this multiverse that's been introduced for Spider Man with the movies. You know, the very real possibility of having a two or even four player Spider Man game with all the different kinds of Spider Pig and Gwen Gwen, you know, and all that, like that mm-hmm. is real. And then on top of that, the Spider Man movies and all the, the ones that are related to Spider Man, like they're showing characters that have been so obscure up until now. Like ten years ago, fifteen years ago, who would have been interested in a Morbius movie? Oh, but no, now, though. now Jared Leto is going to be leading that movie on. To, on to be fair, I, I saw that and I was just like, "They're doing Morbius." Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like, who would have thought yeah. that? The like, Venom. I'm movie. down, but who else is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like. the Venom movie that came out. You know, not only did that have Venom, but that had Ruin in it. Like, who knows mm-hmm. about the other symbiotes other than people who follow this sort of thing? So, mm-hmm. you know, having a game like you mentioned, Cyrus, that has not just Venom and Carnage, but all the other symbiotes in there, Ruin and Scream and all the other ones. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like co-op Spider-Man, symbiotes. I just hope they don't do Agent yeah. Venom. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, right. They could. Could you imagine that? <laughs> I feel like if they did Agent Venom, and this is probably uh, this is something I was going to bring up anyways, it would be in the third game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, but like that would be a He's long... just hunting you down. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Honestly, well, I mean, you know, if they made a Venom game and... And you played as like a symbiote, and there was Agent Venom in there as the, the antagonist. <laughs> yeah. That would be freaking sweet. That'd be cool. Honestly, That'd be cool. that would be sweet. That'd be cool. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. Cash Wrap, so, well, what, uh, what, 
Were you going to add anything? No, it's just it's it's kind of building off of what you're saying, Cyrus. Like I think, like I I would traditionally think it's too early to kind of, you know, bring and introduce characters like that. But like the sky's the scene. The movies have been doing it, started doing it, and this whole idea of multiverse seems to be kind of welcomed by a lot of folks now. So mm-hmm. that kind of just says you can do anything you want. And you, even speaking to trade hold too, like I know, like you said before in previous podcasts, you're, you're not big of a movie guy, Yeah. but you actually got to see uh, into the spider verse and you enjoyed it, right? I literally just watched that a few months ago and I was yeah. just like, dude, yeah, awesome, and you're like, this right? is cool, right? I, yeah. I wish I had seen this in theaters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I did try to get uh, some people to go. Cause I don't like going to movies alone again. Uh, like this show was saying, I'm not big in watching movies. Yeah. So when I do want to watch a movie, I like to go with other people. Yeah. And at that time, everyone had already seen it um, mm. or made plans to go see it with other people. Mm. So I was like, I didn't have any plans to go see it with anybody. And I was just like, ah, I hope it goes back in the theaters. Cause yeah. I would love to see this in theaters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, but yes, uh, I did yeah, very like... much enjoy it. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, right. So <laughs> going off, you said you were going to go last. So what's your rabbit hole of uh, oh, conversation man. here? Oh, like... man. All right. So now... But first of all, um, for minor, for like you, you mentioned Taskmaster, right? Mm-hmm. And eventually you get attacked by Taskmaster. I think the Taskmaster of, Master of the next game will be Craven. Yeah, that's what I think that makes too, yeah. sense. Um, I think in terms of minor villains to start off, I'm not too sure because this is kind of going off DLC. Yeah. Mysterio. Cool. We already know that Mysterio is kind of established, sort of. Uh, it's a little questionable now, but when if you go to if you're doing you Sinister to, Six, yeah, or Sinister Six, you have to do Mysterio. Yeah, well, I mean, no, this is not. It's not just that, but when you go to the uh, when you go to the ESU campus, remember there's some of this those guys dressed in the uh, oh the villain oh no yeah, yeah when so, they were in the freaking uh, the dance right yeah, yeah yeah that's right. So you saw Mysterio, you saw like the lizard, and you're like, well, these characters seem to be established villains at this point. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so Mysterio, I feel like you might it might be a, a minor villain, mm-hmm. but you chase uh, Mysterio all the way, and you find out it's not Mysterio, it's Wraith. Who is Yuri? Okay. Oh, okay. That's true. Because uh, I, I, I don't know if you played the DLC. I uh, know. Have you played the DLC? No, I didn't. So yeah, I, I got through all the DLCs. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. No, yeah, because the whole the whole DLC was based on Yuri's revenge against yeah. you know like freaking Hammerhead. Hammerhead. Yeah. Which is mm-hmm. which the whole thing too. Going back on like the story being lukewarm is the DLC was cool, but I could care less about Hammerhead. <laughs> you know, like I know you're setting up Yuri. I understand all of it. Yeah. Trust me, I've gone through and I'm like, this is good <laughs> writing, but hammerhead you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. and then even silver sable like i get it they're in the game and all the stuff you incorporate them but it's like mm-hmm. i don't know i just feel like to your point they could have used like mysterio used like different people that can go in there but yeah. that being said you know i you know dlc was so i good. think that was probably why i didn't play the dlc <laughs> yeah right you know, yeah, you know? after think... finishing the story the core story of spider-man it was like i mean i honestly really... waited until all dlcs were released before i played them because yeah. i i'm not one of those people who just Let's play a little bit and then let's wait for the next one. I'm like, well, yeah, it's probably not going to be as strong as the main story. Right. So let's just wait till they all. Let's just play do them, them all, all at once. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it made more sense that way. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like other possible villains that will show up, um, well, let me try to backstep a little bit here. Now, this is a scenario that I, I think it would be great if they did, but they probably won't, especially because of how Miles Morales ended. Yeah. Um, but it's still possible they'll do it, even if not probably some of these concepts might actually make it over. Now, let's have, like, Peter, he's in Simcaria during Miles Morales. Mm-hmm. On his fly back, there's, like, some trouble on the plane, and as Spider-Man, he has to try to keep everything together. Yeah. Then you wake up, like, let's say you wake up in, like, a medical center, right? He's, like, hazy, Yeah. doesn't really remember things, but that's your tutorial of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I mean, pretty lousy way to explain like doing a re-tutorial yeah <laughs> um and you go through the story and then you have a symbiote being that's kind of causing trouble yeah which symbiote being new personally i think that would be harry because in one point in the comic he was symbiote spider-man hmm. but not for very long hmm. i don't think he'd be a spider-man but he'd be a symbiote and i think at this point you can p- switch between peter and miles like, I, I really think they're, they're going to have that. But there's going to be a point where you're going to encounter another symbiote, actual Spider-Man. And you're going to be like, well, who's that? Yeah. Because we got Peter, we got Miles. And they're going to be like, who is this? And it's going to be Peter Parker. Because when you walk up in the medical center, you're not Peter Parker, you're Ben Riley. 
<laughs> That's funny. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and bring the bring the clone into the yeah. To bring the clone yeah. into it. Now here's yeah. the thing too. Um, you mentioned the ending of Mao's uh, Morales. Mm-hmm. Now, did you notice the name of the doctor? Oh, Kurt it was uh, Connor. Yeah. yeah, Kurt Connors. So that's the lizard. the lizard, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's the that's the that's the thing that really messes with me because they already showed off the lizard. Like he looks, he seems to have already been an established character. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know if they're gonna be like maybe there's gonna be a different lizard. Or well, the thing Kurt about Connors the lizard is else. he always reverts back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so like he could just be like on his off day. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like he's not in his cycle. <laughs> yeah, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, right? Like he's like, oh fuck! In two days, I'm gonna be a lizard. <laughs> you know, like, like all right, all right, Norman, I need like I'm gonna try to you know, do what I can here. Do what I can before I go ape shit. But you know, yeah. well, I do you think know. that they will introduce symbiotes. Um, in the third I do, game, in, I do, a, in, in the, the second game, second I do, game. I do think they will introduce symbiotes. Um, I do think Venom will make an appearance. Um, he, I. Well, you think Eddie Brock? They didn't mention Eddie Brock at all, did they? They didn't. Well, yeah, the thing I is, that's, that's, another, that's another. That's another thing too. Is that um, I I believe personally that they're going to introduce some characters. I think Gwen Stacy will be introduced. I think Flash Thompson will be introduced. If they introduce Flash before Eddie, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Well. And the thing with Gwen Stacy is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the original, um, one of the more original lore. So Gwen Stacy didn't like Spider-Man mm-hmm. because her father was killed with falling debris between a fight between Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. Hmm. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. Right? That'd be cool. So I feel like they will introduce Gwen. Um, and uh, who else? I think they're going to introduce, I feel like this would be cool. This is just extra speculation. Miles Warren. Uh, if you're not familiar with Miles Warren, he is the jackal. He's the one who does the clones. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So I think um, I think when it comes to the actual cloning thing, if they were to do it, uh, they were trying to save Peter. They're not knowing that he's Spider Man. Yeah, he, they they might have thought that he was like a you know try to keep him alive type of thing. But then Ben Riley wakes up way earlier because Spider Man powers. Um, I think that might be a Kurt Connors thing. And then they might transition, like, they, they might show a change in Miles that will get him, because Miles becomes the Jackal, because he's obsessed with Gwen Stacy. Mm. Uh, I think uh, Miles will be a professor at ESU. And I'm probably going to be way off. This is way too specific. I know that. I know that. <laughs> no, I, know I know that. this is way yeah, too right, specific. Yeah. But I think it'd be, like, crazy because uh, the, they fired... This is crazy, I know. This is... This is, this is Hold tra- on. <laughs> this is Trey Holt's <laughs> pot session. What weed session here. <laughs> I'm probably the only one here that doesn't smoke. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, but... Um, I, get, I mean, they've taken liberties with some of the story already. Uh, the fact that uh, Miles is in high school already at this point. So he's mm-hmm. probably going to be looking into college because mm-hmm. they, they in the actual Miles story, I don't think he ever attends college. He's still in high school. Right. Like he mm-hmm. goes from middle school to high school. Right now he's already in high school. Right. And so I'm I'm guessing he's probably going to also try to apply to ESU. And Miles is supposed to be from <laughs> Miles Warren is supposed to be from ESU. So you have two Miles, and that's probably how they get along. What do you think his GPA is going to be when he joins ESU? Probably same close to Peter's. I don't so know what, whatever be, Peter's was. You think he's gonna be? You think he got better grades than Peter did when he was in school? Well, I think they uh, they're slightly different with the focus on science, aren't they? Yeah, they do have different mm-hmm. focuses. Yeah, I don't know. What four, do you think? Is, what do you think his major is gonna be? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, same major technology. I don't know. Right, right. Computer engineering with a major or with a minor is cooking. Be? All right, just... <laughs> yeah, cooking. <laughs> yeah, cooking. <laughs> what do you think his application is going? What do you think no, his no, five hundred no, word no, essay his, his, about his himself minor, is going to be? Yeah. Like his thesis. His thesis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. See, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, very, very specific. But you know what I've understand with these games is I feel like we're just going to get. I'm saying it right now. I think they're going to tease the symbiote. I don't know if we're going to get full on fledged symbiote. Well, I, really well don't the thing is, I don't think. Uh, I, I don't think. I think you they know? will tease it, but I don't think. Uh, I don't think we'll actually get like, like maybe at the end, but no, like, no, I don't, I mean. like that's at what the I mean. very end. And then that's what I'm saying. Like they're going to tease it throughout the game, and you're finally going to get it near the end. But full on symbiote will be part three, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I'd say one one major thing that I'd say I could see definitely being revealed or like released in the second game is definitely Gwen Stacy with Spider Gwen. Oh, yeah. yeah, because they're yeah. trying to tie in as many Spider Mans as they can, yeah, yeah. and they're going to try to spoon feed us as many as they can. Little and that's by what little. I think too. Yeah. I think uh, like, Spider Man Three, if if they get it that far, which I'm sure they will, would be tutorial Gwen Stacy, because she's mm-hmm. gonna she's gonna somehow become another Spider Man. I hope they. I don't know how they're gonna do that. They they, if they do the whole radioactive like 
spider bite like they did. Well, they That's can like even a repeat of if yeah. we're if we're gonna go deep into this, you do see the Sanctum Satorum, you know, like so they could just have Doctor Strange pop the fuck out and be like, <laughs> yeah, you know, be like, here's Gwen Stacy, like you know, Spider Gwen, go, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, because like, I remember he's just like, there's something strange about that building. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. That's I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure Gwen Stacy will become Spider Gwen. Uh, I'm sure that they will. I I feel like I feel really strongly about the fact that they will introduce her. Yeah. Um, because she will probably have that conflict of not liking Spider Man. Yeah. And then becoming Spider Gwen, and you know, in Spider Gwen is an alternate universe altogether. Like, right. In mm-hmm. Spider Gwen's universe, Peter Parker dies. Right. Yeah. So, that's right. Um, but obviously they take liberties, and this is a new universe altogether. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, I do, but I, I didn't mention it at all, but I do think Green Goblin will be a major villain. I think that's going to be the actual major I think villain. that's the second villain, yeah. 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 Do you think they're going to call it anything other than Spider-Man 2? What do you think the, what do you think the... Subtitle? They, well, they've already, gets, like... If it gets a title, what do you think it'll be? I think it's going to be Spider-Man I think it'll just be Spider-Man 2. I'm Spider-Man tired of, 2. like, shattered dimensions. Like, not, not <laughs> against the game, but, like, just the titles. Web of Dimensions... You know, yeah, like freaking like, Spider Man 2 Black Goo. Shattered <laughs> Edges. Yeah, Black, Black Goo. Black goo. Black goo. Oh, oh, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. Ultimate yeah. Showdown. Is that what you said, Cyrus? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, you know? um, like, so, I mean, if they were to do it this way, I think it'd be great because they would be kind of segueing into Jackal, mm-hmm. which would be Spider Man 3, would have the whole, like, Spider, like, all the different Spider Man clones. Yeah. Man Spider, Kane Parker. I yeah. think Kane Parker would be mm-hmm. interesting. Um, I just want to know when they're going to bring Madam Web into things because uh, I want to see that old lady. <laughs> I want to see that old lady. <laughs> but I want to see gonna, what they do with her. I mean, think how crazy it would be, though. Sp- uh, Spider-Man clones, all the other symbiotes, too. Yeah. And Carnage would definitely be in there. Mm-hmm. And I think Carnage. Venom would, like I think, like I said, I think they would, they're they going to like tease Venom type of deal. Yeah. yeah. Like I think he might even show up. Eddie Brock might be introduced. And, Actually, mm-hmm. Venom. So Venom would probably be like a playable character. Yeah, maybe, that's you know? what I'm saying. Like in yeah. three, it might get mm-hmm. to a point where it's like, and now you're Venom talking will play about... a significant role because this can be other symbiotes, yeah. Spider-Man clones, yeah, and like freaking mm-hmm. Carnage. It's called Spider City, and that's like a completely different. You can imagine different move set, different combo system. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right? that's like a completely different character. So mm-hmm. that'd be. No, I got a question for you guys. Just out of curiosity. Yeah. So obviously we're talking about the future, and we've seen that we're progressing through adding the the additional Spider Man, like Miles Morales, and we're talking about you know eventually adding like Spider Gwen. Do you think that they're going to go as far as going to like the future Spider Man, the Spider Man twenty ninety nine series? I guess they have. We're going to get a Miguel series. That's interesting. They have the costumes in the game. Cause, yeah, because so, okay. so far we've only had that in costume form, but they haven't gone as far as to create that character and bring that lore in. So I, I that's a good question. I actually. don't think it's gonna happen. The reason why, uh, well, not in because I think they're gonna make this a trilogy. Mm. But the thing is, they can do Spider Man is such a long franchise that even if they ended this trilogy with this current, um, where are they in again? Hmm. Uh, they're in New York. New York? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. New York, yeah. Then they could straight start another Spider-Man 2099. You see, I oh, feel like, if anything, trilogy. I'd be down with, like, a Spider-Man 2099 like they did Miles Morales, where it's just a short DLC. Uh, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Well, it, or, you know what? or even a, just a DLC. Like, if they did a Spider-2099, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Um, like an expansion. Like an expansion, But yeah, you yeah. know what? You just remind me of something I forgot to mention. Uh, you guys familiar with Superior Spider-Man? Oh, of course, yeah. Superior. Yeah. So that's, I, that's I so, feel like... I feel like that would be also an expansion. I felt did, like instead of love that one, yeah. instead of giving us Silver Sable and all that BS, that's what I was going to segue into. They <laughs> should have given us just a Superior Spider-Man DLC yeah. where it's like a what if, yeah. not so much like a like this is canon story. Like I understand why they incorporated that with Yuri and the, the freaking Sable and all that shit. You yeah. know, like don't get me wrong, <laughs> but if you give me a Superior freaking Spider-Man DLC where it's three <laughs> full-fledged DLCs, like so, are you familiar with Superior Spider-Man? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you give me like. Episode one, where it's like Doc Ock becoming Spider Man. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Spider Man two, where it's like the second part, where it's like him actually getting to know his abilities and like becoming like freaking Spider Man and <laughs> encountering his obstacle. And then Spider Man, the third episode, him being realizing he doesn't want to be Spider Man. Yeah. And you know, it's basically. The end of that. And it's the end of that thing, you yeah, know? Like, right. Personally, um, like, yeah, I was going to say, um, I think they're going to, I feel like they would do that. 
but I feel like they might be able to do it without making it a what if situation, whereas he's gonna somehow just switch it back. I think that's I, I think that's too. Far I think that's fetched. too that's, too that's deep. Too yeah. out there for the mainline well, series. I think. No, no, no. Uh, it would no, be no, no, awesome. No. But... no, I mean, it's uh, they're gonna do it expansion like like you know the DLCs, oh, oh. but it's still gonna be canon and not a what if situation. That's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, the DLC kind of opens the door to all sorts of different things yeah. you yeah, right? do, really. But so I'd be yeah. down for, like, a Spear, like I said, Spear Spider-Man D- DLC, go with, like, a 2099 DLC. Yeah. yeah. You know, just do, like, all these stories that we really want, like, as DLCs, where they don't mess with the overall timeline. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's, like, it's not too, like, you know, there's not a lot of gray area. You're like, well, this happened in the 2099 series. They had a flashback. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or something. Well, I mean, they, 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 they take a lot of liberties with the Spider-Man universe as it is. That is very true. Um, but, mm-hmm. yeah, because I, I was just going to mention at the end of Spider-Man, you kind of get that feeling that it's not done with Dr. Octopus yet. Oh, it definitely isn't. No, yeah. yeah. Like, he has that look where he's like, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to get back at Peter Parker. Yeah. And so, to me, that almost seems like it might be Norman. a set of superior Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Norman, yeah. Norman. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's part of how he becomes Green Goblin, right? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, overall, I got to say, you know, with that game... Like, I platinumed it so quick, you know, because I was just, I didn't want to stop playing it. Went through the DLC, shout out to my old uh, game advisor. He bought the uh, the Game of the Year edition because he had lost his disc, but he already had the DLCs because, you know, he had the DLCs. So he basically gave me the DLCs for free. Oh, nice. Just took nice. a picture of them and sent them over. I was just like, you a real one, so shout out to you, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. He basically gone through and through and just completed all the DLC, too. And the DLC was super fun. And then I went through, and then right after, just straight into Miles Morales, and it was just like riding a bike, just going yeah, in there, one and just after another, going huh? straight through Miles Morales, you know, and then playing through that. And it was it was really fun, yeah, getting the platinum on it and everything. Yeah, like yeah. I gotta say, overall, Insomniac did a really good job with oh, this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Speaking of taking liberties too, did you know uh, Finn is uh, the the original Finn is a male, older guy. Yeah. See, like, to to uh, Cash Rob's point, I wasn't a big Miles Morales fan. Yeah. To begin with, I didn't like him. Like, yeah, get all that stuff out of my story. Like, I want Peter. <laughs> you know what I mean? But after playing the game, I can see why people like him so much. Yeah. You know, and I felt like I connect him with him more just because of how fun he was to play, and yeah. I got to understand his abilities a little bit more. And I was like, Spider Man goes invisible, kind of stupid. But then I was just like, you actually play it, and you're like, wow, this actually makes a lot of sense. Or yeah. like his Venom ability, you're like, yeah. of course they would have different, you know, like you know, different sets and stuff. But yeah. it actually brought me closer to Miles a little bit. But I still don't necessarily like him as a character, you know. <laughs> but I can I can understand why people really like him. Like we've said before, he's more modern. He keeps you know written at a more modern time. Yeah, yeah. And his abilities are cool as fuck, but. I'm still, you know, like an original Peter Parker fan. Yeah. You yeah. know, at the end of the day. I am too. He kind of came yeah. around after I was, you know, sort of doing other things. So, I, yeah. I, 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 couldn't, I can't say that I grew up with Miles. And yeah. I think if you can say you grew up with Miles Morales, he was probably, mm-hmm. you know, your Spider-Man. But, um, but, yeah, I actually really like his character and, like, um, his journey into superherodom <coughs> is pretty mm-hmm. cool. I think that's what the games did really good was getting you, like... At the end of the game, when like freaking Miles Morales, when you're going up to the freaking new form reactor, right? I was so hyped. I was like, "Get it, Miles, get it!" <laughs> like I was like, like when I was mashing that button, I was like, "Yeah, you saved the fucking city, you know? Like you better save that city right now. Like it's all on you, boy. It's all on <laughs> yeah, you. you know? They did a really good job of yeah, hyping yeah. you up to the point yeah. where you're just like, yeah, yeah. like you yeah. feel like there you go, Spider Man. You know? Like I was even clapping, like you know, like they do a really good job with just sucking you in. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so cool. I I know I know we're up in Muspelheim, you know we're here we're burning up. I know we've got you know Cyrus over in Niflheim. We've spent a lot of time talking about Spider Man. That's should what we, I expected. Should we should we yeah. invite Kratos in? You know, should I we, think we should. Should should we invite Kratos and Atreus in? Yeah, we'll start. Boy. Well, you know, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> boy. <laughs> so go going into boy. going into even just Sony kicking ass. Like I'm surprised that these games didn't get spoiled for me. But oh my god, God of War. Like, God of War was one of those games where I can say, like, instantly was like, yeah. oh, man, I, I can, can I go as far as saying it was a classic, you know? I was going like, to say that, you, were you trying to say classic? Yeah, you know, I was going to say, like, <laughs> can I go as far as saying that it was a classic? Like, that game was pretty freaking good, you yeah. know? Like, it, it was it's a classic. absolutely a classic. And, I, I mean, Distro and I, you know, mm-hmm. I think we came along to God of War way late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we uh, we didn't quite, uh, you know, get around <laughs> to this modern day classic until rather recently. Yeah. And I think we both probably thought at the end why it took so long for us to get to this game. Mm-hmm. 
um, versus Trade Hole and Cyrus. I think you guys played it back when it was I newer, when, right? W- well, when I played the first time, I played God of War. God of War Two was already out. Oh, okay. Um, I was interested in the game, but I felt like I when I heard about it, I figured, oh, hack and slash, whatever, who cares, type yeah. of thing, you know. But yeah. I was interested because it was like, oh, Greek mythology. I'm always down for that, mm-hmm. but. I've never encountered like any Greek mythology like media mm-hmm. that really grabbed my attention because it never felt like Greek like it right. never felt like you were there. Right. It just felt like someone mm-hmm. was acting right. and you were just trying to learn more about it. <laughs> just telling you about but, it. But like yeah. as the one thing that really got me on like on God of War when I first played the game, I was like, No, this legit feels like even if a lot of my friends were like, no, hey, man, it destroys all type of Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's a game. <laughs> yeah. You're introducing a brand new character. You, you expect that. The main grab to me, though, was like, this feels like you're in Greek mythology. Yeah. Like, the conversation sounds right. Everything that's happening sounds right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the action follows that. And I'm like, no, I love this. Yeah. Right now. And the set pieces, man. Yeah. Because I love the fact that you would solve a puzzle and all this underground stuff, and then you would come back. Uh, after you solve it to this one spot, and you're like, "Oh, I'm back here. That was cool." Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and it's one seamless world. Like it's there's no loading screen that from what I remember. Yeah, at least. I mean it. it yeah, it, it it quite effectively captures like the epic nature of the stories that mm-hmm. are told in Greek mythology. Yeah, and now further mythologies. Too. Yeah, right. Especially even like yeah. fighting Hercules, fighting Hermes. You know, yeah. like all yeah. those times, like in those games. So super fun. It was fun playing the first one and collecting all your stuff, and then at the beginning of the second one, them just taking it all away from you yeah. and just kicking you down the mountain. You're yeah. like, oh my god, you know? <laughs> like they do a really good job with the with this new one actually tying in the old lore because that's yeah. what I was worried about. Yeah, was the whole idea of how is this an alternate universe? Like, what's the real thing? But then you see the scar on his chest, like all the way down. Yeah. Did you? Uh, and then like, did you play God of War three or not? Yeah, I played okay. God of War three. Yeah. That's so that's what I'm thinking because because you know you're asking yourself how does it all really like tie in? Like, what happened to Kratos right. you know, at this time? Right. And then at the pickup of the game, you're basically just on a journey right off the bat. There is no like prelude or like yeah. introduction mm-hmm. or anything, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why it was really cool to see how they didn't really directly tell you what the story was going to be. But as you play it more and more, it kind of just opens up for you. Yeah. And then realizing, like, oh, damn, they really are going to start throwing us a bunch of this, like, freaking Norse mythology. Yeah. <laughs> um, back when uh, God of War 3 first came out, the whole, the community, the God of War community, I'm, I was a part of that. You were like, oh, you see that? He, there's a phoenix <laughs> like, where he supposedly died. And yeah. you were like, oh, maybe, maybe they're going to start, like, a new Kratos saga. Yeah. And it won't be... Like, this was an actual... The, like theory that community came up with it won't mm-hmm. be greek mythology anymore right he'll be somewhere else he'll be and so making his way through the others and like yeah the biggest and who knows maybe even Corey had gotten the inspiration from the community yeah but um the community themselves were like the next big one that they should do would be norse mm-hmm. and that makes sense too because of the area yeah yeah so yeah right. so going into that too like if for everybody like said major spoil freaking uh central yeah. when you go up and you're finding all these jotunheim shrines and you're opening them up right the one that got me was the one with the missing panel in the middle and then you find it later on you know like in, basically uh, in, in uh, uh, odin's chamber yeah in odin's chamber mm-hmm. and it's the one that had the symbols in the four corners mm-hmm. and then if you look you mm-hmm. have the eye of Ra, and then you have like the freaking omega symbol and you have the two at the bottom which i forget what they freaking mean if i'm mistaken like uh well one of them I think I'm pretty sure is uh, Shinto which is Japanese you know a Japanese and then there's another one right and it's basically and it's uh, Tyr in the middle and yeah. Tyr is supposed to be the god of war right mm-hmm. so well, pretty much it's him he's, traversing he's sort of, into the he's sort of the equivalent of the god of war but he's not actually he's not really the god of war yeah he's not really the god of war but he's their representation yeah. of like their god of war right sort of. and it's him basically tra- traversing to all these different realms I mean, right yeah like, like it says that he's Traverse all over the world, all over to the different areas. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the so. way that they represent, they re- they uh, half tier represents like he's a peaceful god. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, it, so well, he's not the same god of war as like Ares. No, he's right? the god of war that basically was trying to stop wars yeah. as opposed to trying yeah. to make war exactly. because he understood that fighting wars with intelligence was better than yeah. you know with brute strength, right? right? You know, but it was really cool to your point. Was seeing like how what they could do with all these different freaking realms you're like oh shit what if he was like in egypt yeah you know just kicking ass right now yeah or like what if he was in like japan you know like in this random ass time with the blades of chaos yeah but i'm really glad that they picked the norse mythology you know yeah. like i feel like it just fits really well honestly the most hype when i was playing that game was uh when he says i need to go back home and i was like wait what does this mean 
are we are we getting the blades of chaos and then once he pulls that out it's like oh yes <laughs> yeah. that was that was like that was a huge like surprise to me because i was like i didn't know whether they were going to bring that back yeah mm-hmm. and i was so hyped when they actually <laughs> let you use that i was like dude yeah see i'm sad that's one of the few things that was spoiled for me Oh, you really? know, just from, just like, you know, you're on YouTube, you know, it's in your recommended, oh, and you see okay. somebody, like, doing some kind of run or something, you yeah. know, and it's just like, wait, it's chaos. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, yeah. But so, I, uh, I was going to ask, Cyrus, what's your history with God of War? How how far back? Were you an original fan, or did you come um, in later? Well, I, I started God of War when the first one came out, not right okay. when it came out. I remember I was, like, at the video store looking for a game, and I picked <laughs> yeah. it up on the shelf. I'm like, oh, okay, this looks pretty cool. From that moment, I was hooked. Yeah. I played them as they came out, but I couldn't really? stop playing them. Uh, I think I played the original trilogy three times. Really? Mm-hmm. So, so oh. what drew you to the first one to kind of pick it out? You just were you interested in like just, the? You know, I, I saw it sitting on the shelf, and I'm just like, okay, cool. And I, I've always, I've always had like a thing for Greek mythology. Yeah. So when I see that this was a game like based in Greek mythology, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see what this is about. <laughs> and then you know you're in there kicking ass for the gods and i'm just like okay this is cool. <laughs> right you this became is the ghost of sparta <laughs> you know i also like that call back yeah. too when uh when yeah. the mirror realized it i'm hanging from the bloody hip of the ghost of sparta i'm like oh they actually know him from that name too yeah. all right yeah, right yeah <laughs> uh did did you guys go through the um like the games that were in between you know chains of olympus ghost of sparta ascension all those two the ones on the psp no i missed yeah. those ones sadly yeah. I have them. Yeah. I heard. Um, was it Chains of Olympus? That was the better one. Yes. I hear one. Pe- people say yeah. one of them sucks, and the other one was really good. Yeah. yeah. Chains of Olympus. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think Ascension isn't that great either. Oh, Ascension. Yeah. We don't talk about that one. That was the one <laughs> yeah. with uh, multiplayer, right? Ascension. Yeah, that's the PS3 <laughs> one where he fights the Cyclops. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but it. But it is a. Uh, uh, Canon. As someone who's not mm-hmm. played any God of Wars except this new one. Um. I do like the trajectory of his story, though, and I love what they did. The chances that they took with this, you know, mascot for PlayStation. I mean, talk about the face of rage and, you know, um, Sparta. In, in some, I, I think in some ways sort of immature, um, you know, gamer, you know, as far as complete uh, uninhibited destruction and, and, and anger and how do you make that character grow? What can we do different that isn't just a retread of what we've done three games, six games prior, you know? And it was give him a son. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give, right? Give him something to care about beyond just destruction and violence and revenge and and, and all of these like negative things, you know, I mean, that were uh, associated with him. If you're not familiar with the mm-hmm. original God of War, he had a daughter and a wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's, yeah. it's basically how he became yeah. the God of War. That's how. Right? That's or what the Ghost of Sparta. Oh, the Ghost of Sparta. No, yeah. That's yeah. what's kind of set him on this epic tale of revenge. Yeah. To, and, to your point, yeah. though, it's it's interesting seeing him again with like new son. You know, yeah. like you thought his family was over, but now it's just like he has something he needs to take care of all of a sudden again. Right. Yeah. Like, how do his scars affect how he's gonna uh, take care of the situation? Right. Kind of what he's gonna go through now, and and. What was also cool, again, as someone who not had not played those before, is, you know, God of War 1, 2, 3, Ascension even, like, all these had just such, like, lofty objectives for Kratos. It was destroy the God of War. It was destroy Zeus. It was, you know, completely do this. What's the, what's the main objective in the new God of War? What get is to it? the highest peak of all the realms? To get to, that, get to the top of the peak with your son and set your wife's yes. ashes. That was the goal. Yeah. And out of that goal, we went through this incredible journey through this through this mm-hmm. through this new this new world, uh, different realms. This this relationship developed between this this torn up man and this you know this boy who has greater significance than you know we knew in the beginning. By the end, you find out who the boy is, and and the 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 only thing that's getting you through this game morning, so. yeah we've already yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh mm-hmm. the only thing getting you through this game is 
you just have to get to the highest fucking mountain. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's Plus, all it was, you dude, know? That's actually really interesting, too, not thinking about it, is the game focuses on, like, the objective, but then the mythology is woven in yeah. and out of the actual I story. I love that. As I opposed to where, yeah, like you said, the previous ones, it was the mythology was the story. It yeah. was like, and well, and you you're were, going straight directly to Zeus. You're going to right, you're freaking going Hades, to Zeus. you know? Like, you're building, you're sort of building the mythology as you go, which was really cool with the original trilogy. But in this in this game and in this world, you're coming into an existing mythology. You're already coming yeah, into... I was going to say that I think one of the coolest things they did, and I think it does have... I think it is setting up for uh, for the entire right. sequel and stuff. Yeah. Was the fact that, like, Atreus and Mur- uh, Mimir... Yeah. Mimir. Why, why Mimir. can't I say his name? Mimir. Mimir. I don't yeah. know why I couldn't say his name. Yeah. Mimir. <laughs> Mimir. I, Mimir. I don't, yeah. But um, <laughs> the fact that Atreus and Mimir were just like, these are established... Like gods and stuff yeah, like that, like, like, and it's like they know the gods from from, like, from a fairy tale book, right? Type of thing, mm-hmm. or like reading up mythology. It's like really interesting, yeah. Because not you're not learning about them; they already everyone knows they them. already exist. Well, what's cool too is we feel like we're Kratos in that situation yeah. where he's right. just like, hmm. Like he's yeah. like, oh, they exist in Valhalla, yeah. right? And they're like, oh, you're picking up, yeah. Like, you're oh, getting like, it. And okay. they treat him almost like a child, and you're just like, oh, damn, you know. And, it, and it's like, you, you, you. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. You're put you're put in the shoes of Kratos as an outsider coming in, mm-hmm. but you know, you know, Kratos's history, you know what he's capable of and what he's done. So when people talk about Odin and Thor and nobody challenges Thor and his children and, and, uh, you mm-hmm. know, and then you're thinking from Kratos perspective, uh, uh, I fucked a God up. I fucked many <laughs> yeah, gods right? up before. Yeah, you know, yeah. These ones aren't going to be anything for me. I don't want to do that. Cause you know, I'm trying to try my own path now. now. Yeah. <laughs> But if they want to start some shit, then yeah, you know, right, guess go. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get my blades of chaos real quick. And uh, <laughs> I like how he asked too. He's just like, "Have you ever heard of one with tattoos that can't take damage?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. And he's like, "Oh, that's Balder," yeah. you Balder. know. And yeah. he's just like, hmm. I, "And I think I thought that was great." Yeah, like, again, I thought that was great. I was like, "Man, he just knows this because it's like a freaking." It's like just, I mean, I know his mom told him, but right. it's just like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like you read it from a book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and <laughs> that was so kind good. of a a cool thing is hearing hearing uh, learning about the world with kratos through atreus which is really cool mm-hmm. like atreus was the knowledgeable one in teaching kratos how to do yeah. these things and, and then mimir gives you the deep notes like the, yeah he'll give you the <laughs> yeah he really gets in there he's like oh i was there yeah yeah you know and he's, he's like, like oh, i won't just give you the cliff notes why well, technically he does <laughs> <laughs> yeah right and, yeah and then whenever you're um you know when you're doing the scale like are we scaling walls is when uh mimir would go through a story or atreus go through a story or once you're in the boat you when, know, yeah. yeah once you get up on land you take your axe out maybe i'll save this for another time <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. it's time to kick some shit you know <laughs> kick some ass here yeah r- real quick because uh i know distro just recently completed god of war yeah with, uh, with, the, with the platy ago, how long ago did you cash wrap Oh, it was recent. It was like, I don't know, maybe like a month ago. It was okay. fairly recent, too. Mm-hmm. Did you guys keep in mind any questions that came up that were just like, we never found out about that? Like, um, right off the top of my head, like, some things that we didn't find out about. It's like, yeah, mainly for Thor, Odin. We didn't really touch up on them at all. We didn't really touch up on, like, the well, world serpent, more like you know? Something like, that happened during the game, and you're just like, Stop being vague, man. Just tell us. Yeah, what do you have? Yeah. What do you have for us? Give us the goods, man. I mean, <laughs> like, you remember, that's all. There's, like, parts that I just remember thinking, I kind of want to learn more about this. Like, there's there's got to be something, yeah, something right? more going on here. Kind of like, if you look at the different realms, like Asgard, you know, mm-hmm. like, we didn't go to Asgard at all. We didn't go to Asgard. There was a Sovereign Guard or whatever so, it yeah, is. Like, yeah. Saffir Guard. or something. Guard, yeah. We didn't go there. Cool. And then there's, of course, Jotunheim was missing. And there's one more, if I'm not mistaken, that Vanaheim. we didn't go to. Yeah. Or Vanaheim, yeah. Vanaheim, I think. Vanaheim, Vanaheim. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, like, as far as, like, those, there. you know, that's what I was thinking was the next game would more so focus on, if we're getting into that, was ragnarok would be basically because in in mythology a little bit and you know i did my research for a second you know yeah like loki is supposed to bring upon basically you know ragnarok with like all these different things with all these different like uh yeah and it's when like skull basically catches the moon or the wolves catches yeah Yeah. they catch the moon and the sun right yeah and all these things and i'm thinking that that's going to be a direct correlation with them having to go into the other realms and having to like face thor and all this stuff you know Yeah. yeah So, like, you know, going going into spoiler territory, you know, like, as far as, like, the end game reveal, you know, right. with freaking Retreus, you know, motherfucker's Loki. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the way they just dropped that mic, too, was, like, it was just so good. Yeah. Do you know? I really, yeah. I really like that reveal. I'll be honest. I was guessing it. I wasn't mm-hmm. sure. But I was like, 
what if he's Loki? <laughs> and but then mm-hmm. I was just like, you know, it was like when they revealed, I was like, that's freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. I was like, oh, let my let my head go right now. I'm it was like go, like in circles. In my it head. was like two in the morning for me too. What was messed up is I had stopped playing because I had to go to work. Mm-hmm. Right when you get into Jotunheim, you climb those massive ass yeah. stairs. Yeah, and I was like, I climbed the stairs, climbed the stairs. I got to Jotunheim. I'm like, oh fuck, like they're probably gonna have to me do some like BS mission real quick. So I'm gonna go to work. Yeah, that's what and I then, thought like, too. And then I get back from work and I sit there and you literally just have to go up it's and the spread ending. the ashes. That's it. That's it. That's and then it. like yeah. it's the ending. And I'm sitting there at like two in the morning, just like oh. <laughs> you know it's just like why didn't i just like yeah. fuck work yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah like yeah why didn't i just go up the freaking steps and just spread the mashes right there <laughs> yeah. and yeah. like my thing is i've gone through yeah. and like playing spider-man all this stuff one thing i can appreciate about santa monica studios is at the end of the game they let you walk through the credits and still basically mm-hmm. tie mm-hmm. and he's and he tells them the story of why he was named atreus it, and stuff yeah you know? yeah like yeah. and it's you're sitting there yeah. like and it's like it just sets the tone so well he's mm-hmm. just like what do we do now we go home <laughs> you know yeah, yeah it's just like damn you know mission over credits are rolling it was, a, it's it like, was a nice quiet ending I, I i actually really appreciated that you know yeah right like it was very just like it just felt like until, i could you know, put the controller down and just be like yeah. until you know you went to sleep yeah, yeah right <laughs> and so, so that was another thing i wanted to bring up <laughs> was like did you guys go home right away or no um no 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 me either yeah you know you, you cyrus did? did you go home right away i did i did i mean He's like it's time to go home i'm like yeah let's go home and see what happens <laughs> i mean i i i did pretty much all the side quests i was aware of but i did want to also converse with people on the way back or mm. try to yeah like, yeah so um i didn't go straight home but it wasn't that long until i actually got to the home yeah yeah, right. yeah. To, to your point i'll bring it up there is one thing i wanted to touch on that they kind of like left vague but you know when I was when I was playing the story, you know, like at the very end, I, I was have like, no "Idea of what you're talking about?" Go ahead. Yeah, right. I had a hundred percent basically like pop up on the screen. It's like hundred percent completed. You're good. You know, pretty much. I was like, "Okay, sweet." And then I turned the game off. I'm like, "That's fine." Then I went to work, and I was like, "Cause I had a friend I was talking to about it." You know, he's just like, he's like, "Oh yeah, and did you see like the final scene and everything?" I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Why?" And he's like, "No, did you go home?" I'm like, <laughs> "No, did you go home though?" Yeah, and I was like, "No." He's like, "Dude, you need to go home." <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, like. And I was like, really? Yeah, like, and then I was like, oh, man, don't look it up. And when I got home and you get the fucking cut scene, I'm like, oh, man, like, you know, yeah. The hype? Yeah, the hype. Yeah. And I was sitting there, I was just like, I was going to miss this, you know, like. <laughs> this is going to be missed. And I'm list- like, I was reading some stuff with, like, uh, Corey freaking uh, Barlog 2, yeah. and he was saying that he did it on purpose just to kind oh, yeah. of, like, they had a giant argument where they wanted to put a marker. It was like, go home, like, here's yeah. your marker. But he was just like, no, you have to let the people discover yep. it, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it does really hit that much harder, bro. Oh, it's just yeah. like. You know what I mean? And because yeah. I hadn't had it spoiled for me, I was just like, what? There's a cutscene? Like, yeah. You know? It reminds me of, um, I don't know if you remember Red Dead, but they did that same exact thing. No, oh, yeah. Where you thought you killed Dutch, you know, at the end of that game. We're going to spoil that game here, too. <laughs> yeah, right. You thought yeah. you killed Dutch. I'll, I'll put that in the description. Um, By the way, we kind of spoiled Red Dead. There's Red Dead Redemption spoilers, the first one. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. But you killed Dutch. Uh, or no, sorry. This is, uh, that's the original one. Um <laughs> The uh, John Marston gets killed, so he plays his son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's the hidden mission at the end where you really get true redemption. Yeah, where you go and you shoot the dude in the river. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. I remember that being like a completely optional but true ending. Yeah, but that was the so true ending, it was right? Pretty yeah. similar to that. I, I I kind of enjoy when that happens, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's from Santa Monica Studios, they did a really good job with this game. Yeah, I remember me and uh, Tradeholder were talking about we were playing the Give Me Got a Word like difficulty. I felt from there, like, there was problems with the combat. There was problems yes. with the freaking, uh, with the axe. You know, there's problems with a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, But then I went back and I toned it down because I was like, I need to get through this game. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can prove, I've proved already that I can get through it on this difficulty, but it's just not going to be something I can, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to enjoy. You have the time for it. Or I have the time yeah. for it, yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play it on, like, a more casual difficulty. And then going through, it feels way cleaner. Yeah. Like, it, you can see where you're just like, oh, it's because they're not accounting for these three other people yeah. that are here. They're not accounting for how aggro they are. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, like there's, there's that, and it's the fact that when you're a lot more casual with it, the actual progression of skills will compensate for. Yeah. And I've talked about this a yeah. lot. Like Yakuza games do it. The, the lack of polish is compensated by like new skills that are like way more powerful. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you know you're not as concerned about hitboxes when you're on like the super hard difficulty, and you see, oh, this is not working properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You, when you're more chill about it. He was like, oh, this works for me. Like, yeah. this is enough. That's what I noticed. I was like, oh, I can just brush right past this because I don't have all these things to worry about. Yeah. Or, yeah. like, you know, because this thing isn't broken. That's actually <laughs> you know, how I play games now. So, <laughs> okay, as no, long yeah. as it gives me the minimum product, 
I'm not going after platinums or I don't I don't really do that kind mm-hmm. of thing. I just play it purely to get me. I mean, that's that's not even part of a platinum. That's just like a self challenge. Yeah, you know, yeah. What's what's what that's messed me up too. I was like, I don't even have to do this. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know. But that being said, like going through and actually playing through the gameplay, like I actually really liked it playing on a more casual difficulty. Yeah, because the axe feels nice, and once you get the blades of chaos, or chaos, chaos. <laughs> the blades of chaos, it actually starts feeling like a god of war. Again right. Too. Like it feels like you're like I've said before, riding a bike. You know, yeah. you're like, oh yeah, like let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and you have that range of motion. You know, like you have the AOE with the blades of chaos. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And even though if you look at the stats, you like you're basically it's it's weaker than the Leviathan axe. Right. But. With this combo set and everything, you're dealing more DPS, so yeah. that's why it's combo basically. Yeah. So even going through and like fighting the Valkyries, I don't know. I know you did, you know, trade a hold. Did you fight any of the Valkyries, Cash Rep? That I, that is the one side quest I did want to finish because I just thought that whole side quest was so cool. Yeah. Like the idea of lost and corrupted Valkyries was so cool to me. Yeah. Right. And like I was hitting them with the axes, I thought I'd do more DPS, but then once I got to the Blades of Chaos, I realized with well, some of them I could just melt them. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but as my segue into into what I was gonna say, basically there's a comment Mamir makes at the end. I don't mm-hmm. know if this is what you're talking about. This is but, exactly what I thought. But you yeah, were he talk freaking about. Uh, he walks down the stairs, right? You're like you walk down the stairs with everything, right? And, yeah. you, and Mamir's head's there. He's just like, get me <laughs> yeah. out of here. Yeah. He's like, they took a lot of uncomfortable measurements. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but then he picks it up and he's just like, "Hey, like I think it's when you fast travel out of the yeah, freaking uh, yeah, yep. yeah." And he's just like, uh, "He's like, hey, there's something I want to let you guys know because I before I forget, before it kind of just like <laughs> before, before it kind of just gets lost in the shit, you know." Yeah. He's like, uh, "He's like, someone came and paid me a visit, and he's like, it was Freya." And oh, he's just like really like the the witch, you know, because yeah. as you find out, you basically fuck her over, right? But then he's just like, "Yeah, she was looking for her old wings." She's he trying wants. To find her old wings she's trying to she find was, her old wings. She's yeah. The original queen of the Valkyries. Yeah, because when you go oh. through the Valkyrie quest, remember she's just like, "Oh, Freya was our queen," but right. basically, yeah, that's right. she got her wings removed by Odin because he wanted to shame her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you remember? Yeah. So basically, she what, goes back to Mimir. She's like, "Where are they?" That's what I was wondering. Is uh, you know, when you finish the Valkyrie quest line, mm-hmm. it seems like that's it. But like, I was wondering because the Valkyries are so significant to yeah, Norse the, mythology, right? There's no way that they couldn't play a, a, a part in the oh. in the rest of this trilogy. Oh, of course. It was like, they, that couldn't have been it. We couldn't have just killed all of them like that. Like, yeah, they right? gotta come back at some, especially well, if we're gonna see Odin. They, this, like, they, they, his... they said that the spiritually they are back in Valhalla. Yeah, uh, so like... The, I am curious mm-hmm. though how they're gonna play a part. How will they And we're gonna get into it. We're definitely gonna get into it because of lore-wise. But, yeah, that's like... I, 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 didn't think that they were finished, even though we finished them, yeah. you know, in this realm. You know, I didn't yeah, think well, they were when finished. you beat them, they say that they're they're going back to Valhalla. Right, we're yeah. just freeing them to yeah, go back to Valhalla. It's form. like it's right. it's kind of fucked up, but you understand what the queen or what the what Seagreen was doing, you know? Yeah. Oh, excuse well, me, per, well, per, 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 per out real quick, but no, Seagreen wasn't the one that did it. It was Odin. Well, it was like... no. So what Seagreen was doing with the Valkyries, basically, oh, she yeah, was yeah, leading yeah. them into the chambers, basically to save them from themselves. Yeah, yeah, save yeah, them yeah. from themselves, and yeah. then to also like keep Odin from really utilizing them for like the bad shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. What are you talking about the council? What's up? Yeah, the Sorry. council. Oh, the you know council. what I'm talking about? Yeah, the council. Um, they did. They, I don't think they actually explained that part. Yeah, Seagreen basically lets you know, like, at, once you basically finish like the yeah, whole yeah. thing, she basically tells you, like, yeah, she basically well, saw what was going what, on. What she, what she said was that she put them. Or it sounds like she put them in the different realms yeah. to separate them, but I suppose as for why that council exists. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, not that so much, yeah, okay. but okay. but more so she puts them in the different realms, yeah, yeah, but yeah. she makes them in physical bodies yeah. to kind of trap them. Yeah, to yeah. you know, them, yeah. and that's why they're in like their because little like corrupted. cocoon, you know, yeah, because yeah. yeah, they're corrupted. Yeah. As opposed to if they were in Valhalla or something yeah, yeah, that yeah, can yeah. cause real damage, yeah, you know, yeah. like yeah, right. And then she basically had to like enslave all the Valkyries in order to like you know keep peace, and you know here you are freeing them, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like it's it's really it's really cool how they do these things in the game too, where it's kind of like, who are you helping though? Because like even well, like when you're in Alfheim, like right. they're just like you made a big mistake, mm-hmm. you know. And like even Kratos says a lot, it's like, hey boy, you don't have all the information, so yeah. stop making judgment and like stop trying to think like you're making the right decisions. You exactly. Know? It's like and and even the act the action of freeing corrupted Valkyries and allowing them to go to Valhalla to you know either fulfill their ultimate yeah, right. purpose, but their ultimate purpose is guardians of odin and if you're if your it's journey as kratos mm-hmm. you know ends with a with an odin showdown well his guardians are gonna but, come but, but, <laughs> and that's the thing too and uh, again i was gonna we were gonna get into it that they they technically have it out for odin too yeah. so it's kind of weird how that's they're gonna like happen in between. because they're they're supposed to train 
warriors that died, like, you know, heroically. Right. So, for Ragnarok, but that's for Odin. Right. But they had this council outside of Asgard. Right. Because that was outside of the Allfather's watch, mm-hmm. you know, Odin's watch. Yeah. So, obviously, yeah. they have conflict with him. Yeah. And on I top of that, they had conflict with him already because he took away Freya's wings. I'll say, no, that's wings. probably why, because of Freya, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because Midgard is supposed to be the land where everybody came and collaborated mm-hmm. together. It's supposed to be, like, the, the central area, like, yeah. their hub. Right. Everyone's welcome. Everyone's, everyone's safe. Everyone's here, yeah. You know, so I think that's... Way, that's how Freya was kind of hide them in plain sight where it's kind of just like hey we'll have them in Midgard you know but mm-hmm. to your point like and even what you were saying like you free them all what if they're now you just gave Freya her army back right exactly so if she really wanted to get vengeance on you and well, then get vengeance on Odin the you know like the queen brings her yeah. soldiers you know yeah because well, the she even says they're loyal to her right you they know, are like, loyal yeah. to her but uh, I think Odin's the one to hit them mm-hmm. yeah so I don't think if I mean if they were I'm, I'm sure they're, they're actually loyal to her mm-hmm. but if they knew where her wings were, yeah. they would have given them back to her. They would have given them back, yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true I, yeah. So I think Odin was the only one that knows. Just yeah. like uh, the eyes of um, Mimir. Oh, no, no, yeah. I was yeah. just about to say murmur again. Murmur. Mimir. Yeah, right. <laughs> See, and I can't, I can't keep the conversation going without mentioning my boy Brock and Sindri. <laughs> you know, like Brock and Sindri made Brock the game for me for a minute too. Like just, Sindri, just guys. their relationships. Like I can yeah. say best merchants. You know, like hands down. I want them in all my games. They were good. <laughs> you know? I really like Mimir. I really like Mimir. Mimir was cool. Was cool too. You know, I like I like Sindri. You know, all the secondary characters yeah, were really were all good great. in this game. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, really good cast of characters. That's why you feel like you grow attached to them. You know, yeah. like real quick too. And you really just get a sense that you know they're. They've lived in this realm, so they, you know, the history that they've seen and all of that. And I know how they know each other. It's like we've they met know each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like you know, like you really, it just adds to that sense that you're coming into an established world already. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm like not the hero, you know. I'm mean, you, Kratos. I'm not the hero here. Yeah, right. I'm just passing through. <laughs> but apparently, everything here wants to kill me. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, right. No, I'll exactly. Fight, but uh, you know, I'm just passing. It's, through. it's really <laughs> ironic too that uh, in Kratos's mind. Um, all these people are after him because they know who he is. Yeah. When in fact, no one knew who he was. Right. They they had different objectives. Odin sent them because, you know, and like, because he mm-hmm. wants to know who he is. Yeah. And Balder was there because he thought he had the cure to his, you know, to pain, his, yeah, to his mm-hmm. curse his or that, whatever. Yeah. Curse, yeah. Yeah. And so it's like no one actually knew who he was, but Kratos <laughs> thought they knew who he was. He put himself on blast, you know. Yeah. He thought that they but, were. And then at they... the same time, though, the way that they phrase it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's mm-hmm. like, you can't blame Kratos. They were using yeah. language that made him. Because you find out they were, out they were looking for Faye, right? They were looking for his, were looking uh, for Faye, for his yeah, wife, or, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. yeah. Pretty much just or like. Lafay, I don't know how they would. Lafay, yeah, you know, Lafay. yeah. But that was the whole thing, too. When you find that at the end, you're like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> they weren't even looking for Atreus at all. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, right. you know they were looking for Faye. Yeah. They didn't know that she had been burned. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, they didn't even know, yeah. That's true. The way they word it, you're kind of like, it's very misleading. But, but it's, it's just, it goes with the storytelling. It's supposed to. Yeah. It's supposed to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you're supposed to also think the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. What, what they were saying, too, is uh, everything that was written that you go up and Atreus sees, or everything that's like in the blue writing oh, and stuff right, like that, right. was written by Faye. Oh, okay. That was a that she had plotted the, the uh, their the trail like beforehand, like yeah. and even like the hand marks on all the trees and yeah. all that stuff. Well, like, that one was definitely fake. That one's definitely fake. Yeah, but yeah. even even uh, Corey Balrog says like yeah, like or Barlog says he freaking uh, put that stuff in there intentionally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so that you can see that Faye had already seen she everything. She had already like, planned all this, and she them. literally walked the path up to the mountaintop. Yeah. You know, like to exactly where they were going to be. Was. You know, I mean, it like, seems like the giants in general already had. The whole prophecy. Yeah, and they had yeah. the prophecy yeah. and everything. And that's, why, yeah. I mean, that's why Odin wanted to get... So that's yeah. cool. It's like, even right. indirectly, yeah. she was there with you guys, like, basically leading you through what you needed right. to do, you know? Yeah, pretty that's what much, like, said at the end. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. what he said at the end. Like, she yeah, was so there. She was with us, yeah. The whole time, you know? Now, real, real quick, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if Cyrus remembers any questions that were, like, while you were playing the game, that was just like, what happened here? They never explained it. Um, I don't know if you had any of that. I'm not sure if he's a... Uh, he, he might be distracted oh. right now. I think Cyrus oh, is yeah, in the yeah. midst of Niflheim right now. He's getting, <laughs> he's getting messed up. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I was saying... I'm getting that, ready for a thing after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was uh, saying, um, as going back to the question I had before, like, did you... Was there... Do you remember any parts of the game where you're like... You had question... You had a question about what was going on, but they didn't ever explain it before I actually mentioned it. Um... This has been a while for you, I'm sure, so. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't really remember. So, one big question 
for me was when you left Atreus with uh, Freya mm. to go get your blades and find yeah. his cure. Right. Someone blew the horn for uh, Jormungandr. Never found out. Who oh that yeah, was. I remember. Oh, I remember that. I remember because I actually, I thought it was. I thought it was either like one of the two sons. I was thinking it was Magni someone from, right. yeah, one of them or Balder. I thought it might have been Balder, or mm-hmm. I thought maybe it was even like Thor or someone. I thought like it was related to from, no, from nowhere. There was something in the serpent because remember he even says he's just like I knew messing with that serpent would pull you guys out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So like, if anything, I thought it was Balder. Yeah. You know, basically going up, blowing the horn just to rouse the serpent to just like to mess around. That's yeah. way yeah. later though, when they're inside. Uh, yeah, that is oh, that okay. is that is way later, you know. But still, you know, I like, do remember yeah. hearing that though. Like, yeah. Like as I was playing, because and walking that was around. like one question. I was just like, who did? They that? never answered that. <laughs> yeah. That's true. No, yeah. And then uh, another one is what happened to Tyr. Mm. Oh, that's true. We well, never yeah, found I, out what happened. I don't happened think they ever here. answered Apparently, that Apparently, at the end, all the giants are dead. That's the... Or they're gone. That's right. what yeah. Atreus says. Yeah. And, um, and you're just like, well, what happened to Tyr? Yeah. And then on top of that, you see um, among uh, Jotunheim all these, you know, giant bodies. Yeah. But we also establish uh, not all giants are actually giants. Like, right. that's just the name of the race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Right. So, to me, I'm just like, are those actual giants or part of this whole prophecy thing that someone had actually built all this as a prophecy of Ragnarok. Mm. Like, so I was wondering, like, I don't know whether that means the giants are dead, but I still don't know what happened to Tyr. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they leave that out. It, it sound, I didn't get an impression that we were supposed to know what happened to him yet. See, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. But these are, like, some of the questions I'm, I mean. like. See, what's end. really cool with, like, yeah. Norse mythology is you do have the tree of life or whatever, basically, that Each ties so, in yeah. all of the, you know, the realms and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I like to think is because they go into, you have the, uh, what was that stone that you get, the black one? They, I forget what the fuck they the call it specifically. Oh, the, the, the Unity Stone. Stone That's the one yeah. that lets you traverse like mm-hmm. deeper into the realm between realms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I feel like if anything, Tyr might be somewhere there, like where he's able to, like we've said before, he can kind of see. He can see. Like yeah. kind of just like what's freely. going on. Like he can see Kratos. He can see whatever God of War here. He can see whatever God of War there. Yeah. And he's just basically like prophesizing on it, or he's basically like, yeah, you know, commenting on it. But I feel like he's kind of like tying into Destiny a little bit. He's kind of like that Osiris character where he's yeah. just. He's almost overseeing things, but in this weird realm where it's like... Yeah, you know, well, you you know, know what I mean? You know what's an interesting, an interesting thing interesting about thing. that? You know who is supposed to do that? Who? Heimdall. Oh, yeah, Heimdall. Yeah, yeah that's right. Him. Yeah, they, they did, did mention Heimdall, him. yeah. But uh, he didn't, didn't show him. They but never brought him. He's gonna be, he has to be important because yeah. he's who Loki faces off in, in Ragnarok. In yeah, Ragnarok. he's the one that's supposed to blow the Galahorn, right? Yep, or he's the one that's like, supposed yeah. to blow the Galahorn. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. So, and then uh, another question is... Um, what was the other one? Why did they measure... Uh, why did the dwarves measure... Uh, take all the measurements for the mirror? Do you want to make them a badass helmet? Gun? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, like, you know? Yeah, they, with I, I've always wondered about taking that Taking measurements, measurements of him. I feel, I feel like mm-hmm. there was a purpose with that. Yeah. You see, yeah, they did a really good job of just basically making the lore kind of round itself out and not making it too just like where it's hard to digest they really pack enough of it in there yeah because yeah. that's what i was worried about i was like i don't want to have to go through all of these like it's not that i don't want to it's just tedious having to learn all this crazy lore to not really understand the story but yeah. they did a really good job of centering on like yeah odin you know fey you know thor was a really big thing and then yeah. even balder you know just keep it simple yeah so with the way that this one ended, if we're thinking about this as a new trilogy, which I think I think Core it's has be a set trilogy. a trilogy, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, are we thinking Thor is going to be top villain in two? Well, you we killed his sons, you know. So killed like, his sons, so so he's pissed I think, off. I think so. <laughs> and yeah. then and then Odin in uh, in three. Probably like they did God of War. Yeah, you save Zeus just for like the God, third one. Just you know, like yeah. God of War. You know, I mean, or the I mean the trilogy. the question is more of a whether Odin. Well, whether we you will even have a chance to face off with Odin in the second one before you actually get to the final showdown in Ragnarok. Right. Um, but I was just, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to straight get into like the knee deep down. What, what do you think will happen in the next game? And the final question that everyone has, most everyone has, is does Kratos die? Hmm. Oh, yeah, and that's another thing too. So as far as for Ragnarok, I think what did they call it? The the Fintel Winter or what's it yeah. called? Fiddle uh, Winter. Fiddle Fiddle Winter. Fiddle winter. Whatever the hell it is, we'll call it Fiddle Winter. Yeah. So when they play their fiddles in the winter, yeah. So like, yeah, you know, everyone plays their fiddles everyone in Ragnarok. Comes out with can, a fiddle. Uh, what's that? So, what's that guy's oh, name? Fimble from, Winter. Uh, Fimble Winter. Fimble Winter. No, no. Oh no, Fimble. Fimble Winter. Fimble winter. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just gonna make a joke about uh, I forget what his name is from Metal Gear. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, yes. I know what you're talking about. Oh, Miller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's over there in Fiddle Winter. <laughs> yeah. Go chilling in Fiddle Winter, you know? Fiddle Winter. Yeah, but I feel like that's going to be the main premise of the game, basically the end of, you know, basically Fimble Winter. Yeah. And I think we're basically going to have a situation where it's like, kind of like God of War 2. Mm-hmm. Where you're gonna basically gonna have, start going into like like we said the main gods in there, you know. So mm-hmm. like we're gonna see Thor, obviously. We're probably gonna get Odin in there. Mm-hmm. Thing is, I'm not too well versed with the gods, but I'm pretty sure we're even gonna see Skull or like we're gonna see the Skull wolves, you know, Hati. You know, I come do out. agree yeah. with that. Like I feel like they're gonna pop out and we're gonna have some kind of interaction with them. They, they as far are. As they like, already mentioned that Odin has them as pups. Yeah, he has them. Yeah. As, he had them as pups. So yeah, yeah basically, like they're they're a thing in yeah, there. Yeah, you know? they're a thing now. And so, uh, and then from there, the main thing I can see is maybe playing as Atreus maybe for a little bit who knows I definitely agree with that because he will be older I, for I sure think, you know? I think there will be moments where you will specifically play only with Atreus because I think like Kratos is going to go down like he's going to go down for a minute and I think it's going to be up to Atreus to bring him back yeah. because he needs him you know or something like, kind of like a last of it's going to be like yeah it's Ellie exactly where it's Joel's like it's a moment injured. of like real character realization where he's got to be like hey like I'm not going to have my dad forever so like I'm going to have to really Step not that he hasn't already, but yeah. like he's got a really freaking man up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean they're kinda of building him up anyways, you know, especially with the big reveal. So And it'll be like Atreus needs to get like let's say a god ability or he needs to like unlock more of his god potential yeah. to save Kratos. To mm-hmm. save Kratos, yeah. You know? Like in the face of freaking, you know, like what's her name? Freaking um witch girl. I'm, Freya? I'm, yeah, Freya. Freya. I'm spacing. Yeah, Freya. You know, with freaking Thor after them and all this stuff. Like, yeah. Because I think Thor is going to come over to Kratos right off the bat in the beginning of the game. He's just going to just wreck him. And maybe that's how like, you reset Kratos's up leveling that we just went like kind of like what they did in two. Yeah, right. Kick yeah. you off the mountain, make you start over. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> maybe Thor will just kick Kratos' ass. I think Thor is going to whoop Kratos' ass. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry, Kratos, but yeah. like even the way he was there, he's like a gunslinger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Cyrus isn't on board with that. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, Kratos is too badass. Let's <laughs> let's go real quick though with uh, Cyrus. What do you think they would do in the next game? Because I know you which have has a, already like, been called you, Ragnarok, you, right? Already, like, mm-hmm. It's already we're called. The, well, no, what? they they haven't officially. They called just said Ragnarok. Ragnarok oh, is okay. called. I thought they the, officially. The, the yeah, thing I is, mean, like you, you guys already pretty much talked about, like or, I think we're gonna definitely see like beginning of stages of Ragnarok, and I think we're gonna find out that. um a lot of the stuff that happens in Ragnarok, like mythology wise, is actually going to be, you know, Kratos just wrecking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I was to say that, uh, so it's not officially called Ragnarok yet. I honestly, I'm not no. too sure whether they'll call it Ragnarok. Um, right. Because every time people say God of War Ragnarok, Corey responds with, I haven't heard of that title. <laughs> and the thing is, it's. I would think the third one would be called Ragnarok because I think the third one will happen, will be you would think, Ragnarok. Yeah. Yeah. So what would they call the sec? What would they call the third one if they call the second one Ragnarok? Because yeah. they know it's a building. Mm-hmm. Right. The, the whole thing yeah. with Ragnarok in two is building, but they show off the logo with the runes that say Ragnarok around it. So right. it's like it's I like, don't know. What do we? Belie- what do we? It believe could be here? actually called God of War Ragnarok, but then I just don't know what they would call the third one. Yeah. Right. Um, but so- sorry to cut you off, Cyrus. Go on. Oh no! And you make a very good point. I definitely agree that you know. Two is not going to be, you know, the Ragnarok. If they're going to do that, they're going to wait to do that till the end. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. But I'm, I'm definitely I'm excited curious. to see, you know, a little a little skirmishing with Thor. I think probably the the biggest thing that I'm most excited about is to see uh, Freya's vengeance unfold. Yeah. After mm-hmm. all that went down. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's what I'm the most excited for. The way she put it, too, when she was telling him, she was just like, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah, she was just like, I'm going to put your body on a post like, and parade you parade across you the around, nine yeah. realms, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I was I like, mean, that when right I heard there, that, I was like, oh, damn, you know? Like, you know, yeah, I think... Well, you know what they say, man, hell hath no fury. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, hell that... in this case is, you know, uh, Loki's son. <laughs> that was definitely like completely by design too i don't think that we're supposed to care about thor and odin too much right now i think maybe through oh, the yeah. course of game number two we will but this is purely a personal story between Frey and kratos oh, yeah. so we have to see that resolution mm-hmm. before anything i think gets figured out i mean thor lost his sons yeah but well, it's like, Thor doesn't care. Thor doesn't care. Thor thinks very little of Modi and Maggie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so it, was, yeah. It, was, it was poetic, too, in that sense. He's that a few times, but he just doesn't really care. He doesn't really care. Whereas yeah. we saw Freya's 
relationship with Balder, and we saw what that was like at the end and, mm-hmm. and i couldn't imagine skipping over her story lightly that we need to yeah, see right? her yeah. her vengeance or whatever that looks like and then maybe that would lead somehow into the ultimate end with with this round or this world mm-hmm. you know who knows but well, if you really look at the dialogue too you look into it like even when she helps Kratos with the tray is when he's sick and he's dying. Yeah. You know, she's basically like, all he has to say is like, it's the boy. And she's just like, oh shit, like let it get him in real quick. Yeah. Like that always changes yeah, everything. Yeah, how she treated his And she's son. always telling him, you know, like basically like you need to take care of your son. You basically yeah. like all this dialogue. And then it's just like, I, she even says something in the story too, where she's just like, it's because it's your son, like it's for your son yeah. basically, yeah. you know, like that's why I'm helping you so much. Yeah. Because even after he's just like, why help us? You know, it's just yeah. like, it's not helping you. I'm helping the boy. Yeah. I'm helping yeah. him. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and the whole thing. But then, like, yeah. when you see it, it's just like, and then all of a sudden, Kratos goes over and kills her kid. It's kind of like, <laughs> how would I, you yeah. know, like, I helped you with your child, and now you're coming over, and you're basically snapping my child's neck. Like, <laughs> I'm going me. to murder you. When so I you're told like, you not to. <laughs> it's, yeah, right? it's like uh, Mimir said it's a hard decision, because, you know, he, he owes a lot of gratitude to Freya, and he definitely thinks that Freya is better to be around, or to have a life, than Balder. Yeah. You know, because yeah. mm-hmm. Baldur's trying to kill her. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Kratos yeah. is playing it like a god. He's like, I need you. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. No, more I, so than like, let's say someone with compassion. He's looking at it more so like, hey, like this makes more sense. Yeah. You know, no, I, I think it's I, I do think it's compassion, too. Like I, I, you know, as someone who still wants to live like mm-hmm. solitude mm-hmm. and to just kind of be at peace. Yeah. The fact that Freya, he misunderstood her because she was a god. And then, you know, she's one of the good ones. Yeah. And she's very helpful and she's very compassionate. And then it's just like... So he's going to murder her child. Yeah. Well, no, because it's just more like, <laughs> yeah, no, this, yeah. guy, this guy is messed up in the head. Like, Well, so and he wanted to kill I her, think, too. I think he's just know? salty because Baldur freaking was kicking Kratos' ass for a second. Well, he let him go. But mm-hmm. as soon yeah. as, you know... Well, well, Kratos was convinced Baldur was going to kill Freya. Yeah, no, so I think he felt closer to Freya. Yeah. But of course, Freya's saying, let him kill me. I'm, yeah. I, yeah, right, yeah. I, I would never... I would sacrifice my life if it meant he can live. And the thing, with, you... the thing with Baldur is that if even if uh, he got to kill Freya, he'll probably still be chasing Kratos around. Yeah. I was there would to say, have been something there, I think. Do you think Kratos did it because Atreus was there watching and he was trying to set the example like, hey, I'm going to save her, you know? Like, this isn't right. No. Don't kill me later. Do you I, think, Or do you think if he was by himself, he would have just let it happen? Kind of like, I'm, this doesn't concern me whatsoever? Well, that's... that's if uh, Assuming all the events happened the same way, but just so happens that this time, Atreus wasn't... Wasn't present, you wasn't know? Like, present. Yeah. I think I think he's... I think Kratos he still would have saved Freya. Saved Freya. Saved Freya. Um, because again, I think he he feels like he owes her a lot. Because you remember, like, well, anything, there was that theme where there is just like, why would he kill his own father? Like in that side quest. Well, and yeah. he's just like, there's a lot of things that you don't understand. And then he even tells him in the story, he's like, I killed my own father. Yeah. You know, yeah. So well, that's the thing is, I think the beginning of the game, Kratos wouldn't have cared. He would have let Baldur yeah. kill Freya. Yeah, no right. Yeah. What. So yeah, it, yeah. It, it was a. Tr- I think it was sort of atreus's influence on him well, that made him want to inter be more compassionate you know like, like, well, no, that's, like, that's what i was know. saying like if everything happened the same way with atreus yeah. but then atreus just wasn't there for that present situation right i think he still would have saved her but the fact mm-hmm. that if i mean if we're taking atreus out of this whole thing yeah then most of his journey would not happen <laughs> right right yeah right yeah <laughs> Yeah, they exactly. wouldn't even they wouldn't even be after him. <laughs> but even like, like there's no two beds. There's no two. <laughs> but yeah, but even exactly. like a, let's say a Kratos that's brand new in a new land, looking to start over. Yeah, I think he would have just been like he would he would have no, not yeah. involved no, himself at all in that. He, he definitely yeah. would just have been like no. Get out and, of yeah, here. I think see how much the little boy does to him. Learning, yeah, of, learning know, about yeah. learning like what the world is like from this boy's perspective, you know, mm-hmm. and saving. He always wanted to save people or help people. I think that rubbed off on him at the end and sure enough it got them into trouble yeah so. <laughs> and again because i mean the you know freya saved atreus so of course that's a huge influence yeah too. even if mm-hmm. not atreus directly yeah that that would be a huge influence on saving freya yeah um i'm i'm curious how how they're going to do ragnarok though because ragnarok is the ultimate ending for this for yeah, the right? story and i you know that's that's um you know, it's uh, it's funny you you mention that uh, interesting part of the segueing from Freya because the thing is, mm-hmm. uh, Vanir magic, um, Mamir M- had actually mentioned when you're going through. I think is it is that Tears Vault? No, it's uh, that one village um, 
with the was it Thalmus? The giant with the big Oh with the freaking oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. when you're going up that area yeah. and there you and he's like, you know, how is this happening? And it's like this is this time magic. And it's a veneer magic. And, the whole, and uh, the reason they don't use it is because they found out that it can stop the sun and the moon, <laughs> but it can't stop wolves from attacking you, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so in that same regard, uh, the thing with Freya and Balder is that the reason why she quote-unquote cursed them with this no sense of pain and immortality yeah. is because the prophecy was he would die a pointless death. Mm. She didn't want that. And then in the end, mm-hmm. he died a pointless death. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like you can't avoid that prophecy, that fate. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. the Odin had captured Skull and Hadi, mm-hmm. who are supposed to eat the sun and moon as the start of part of the start of the Ragnarok. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think he's gonna let them out. You're gonna fight them. Mm-hmm. But, veneer magic, happens. Yeah. Sun and moon stops. They're gonna get it. The wolves will get it. Anyway. Yeah, and it's just another example of it's he just, tried to control fate you can't and can't do it. Yeah, that's and gonna still be brought up, about no matter yeah. what. Yeah, because right. yeah. Loki is in theory supposed to be the god of mischief, right? Yeah, you know, in that sense, mm-hmm. like we think of Loki in like the Marvel, where it's just like it's Tom Hiddleston and stuff like that, right? <laughs> yeah. But I like the idea, like like you were saying, trade hold earlier, where it's gonna be the events of Ragnarok, or I think it was even you, Cash, I was saying, mm-hmm. but instead of these, uh, or I believe Osiris, everybody said it <laughs> all the way across. Said it, everybody right. said it, but like where the events of Ragnarok are really just Kratos, like freaking just fucking shit up, right? Yeah. So yeah, like, what if, yeah. what if, what if Loki is uh, like influence and his mischief isn't so much him like trying to mess things up, but him messing things up because he's trying to save Kratos, like, or yeah, or maybe so he's so his... a, he's affecting the events of Ragnarok, yeah, not so much the way they're supposed to happen. Because of let's say Kratos' influence there, because he's not supposed to be there. Yeah, you know his, his mischief, his 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 trickery was Kratos. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, basically, like, like that's why he's like let's say he's not Greek on the God. specific path. He's <laughs> yeah. kind of offbeat well, a little bit. There's know? that. I definitely considered that. All. Um, there's that. Mm-hmm. I think there's also that they they might because they're you know, I I personally I think Freya might do this. But because everyone has this vendetta against Atreus and uh, yeah. Kratos now, yeah. um, Freya, I feel like even then she doesn't want to hurt Atreus. Atreus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So instead, her way of hurting him is to spread misinformation on mm-hmm. what's going on in like the journey, in like the second game journey, to yeah. make it seem like you know Atreus has done these things. Yeah. And I do think he's gonna get powers for shape shifting. Um, mm. Or at least in some control with wolves. Yeah. Because they, they're, they're going off that one quite a bit. Do you um, think they're going to draw like a, a division between Atreus and Kratos in game two? I think so. But I don't think it's going to divide them. I think they just yeah. have to do that for character development. Yeah, but, right, right. You know, yeah. I think at the end of the day... It's more like a physical division and not so much an emotional one. Yeah, right. I feel like Atreus is still bound to Kratos, you know? Yeah. like Yeah. You know? I think that is the heart of the story right there is the father and son relationship, as I say. Right. You know, I don't see them kind of just like I, I'm, dividing I'm, it too much. Yeah. But just enough to where like, you know, it has yeah. to make sense. I'm curious like if, you know, they'll use Freya as a, as a division between them, try to grow some division and like at the end they'll come together mm-hmm. or something but you know they they both well atreus cares about freya you know immensely i think at the yeah. end and so i wonder if she might try to use that to kind of turn them against each other manipulate him a little bit you yeah. Know? yeah i can see that i actually uh that actually makes another point because i was going to bring up the mural now mm. did you guys look too much into the mural at all no i looked at all the murals yeah like, yeah did, did you look into the last one the jonaheim one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like did you look into you know uh what they might mean or anything like that? Uh, Not necessarily. I, I think I was kind of but... yeah, I was kind of listening to like what they were saying as they were as mm-hmm. they were being revealed. Yeah, like I looked at every that. single one. I read the lore cards. Had Mamir talk to me about them. Like basically everything that was offered in game. I didn't go off game to okay. look for it. Well, um, speaking on that, what do you think of that one that Kratos was concentrating on? Which one? The one that with the banner that kind of blew mm-hmm. off of you know? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it was like. Atreus holding Kratos, but with the freaking, uh, with the thing coming out, right? Yeah. I think it's him using, like I said, that god ability that he has, something that unlocks in him to essentially help Kratos come back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because like I said, I think he's going to get knocked off, like, just wrecked in the second game. Yeah. Like, he's going to get removed. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to play as Atreus for By a bit. Thor. 
And that's your ability to freaking <laughs> save Kratos, you know? Thor's going to do it, too. Okay. Thor's going to kick about, Kratos' uh, ass, I cash think, at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, think so. that'll happen. I think it's going to be like a defense? cage fight. I think, there, that, yeah. I think Yeah, I think so, too, actually, when I was looking at that, too. What do you think, uh, Cyrus? Because I know that's no, a big... I think, def- I think it definitely has something to me, so... Yeah. Oh, okay. Because uh, cause that's, that's a big, you know, controversy or part of discussion when it comes to what the next game will present. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's what it means. Now, this is probably something that you didn't really look into. Um, all mm-hmm. those carvings are actual letters written in like the old Norse mm. Germanic language. Mm-hmm. Um, on that, they refer to Kratos as a Farbot. Or or something you see, like I haven't that. I haven't caught up on my Norse, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. The, or on my on my Nordic on language. My, well, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 thing yeah. that, like, the thing about that is that that's not as important in actual lore. Loki's father is Farbati, mm-hmm. and so that mm-hmm. they refer to as Kratos as such. Um, but on that mural, if you look into it, it was something like um, it, I have something like something deaf and all that stuff. But then on the left side of it, it says fake. Hmm. Hmm. So, so they would fake that that death for some well, reason. Well, it's, it, it, it's either there. There's that, or there's a possibility that uh, it's a something, some kind of deception that mm-hmm. happens there. Right. Like my, like I, I thought about multiple things. First of all, when I saw the whole thing coming out of his mouth, I thought uh, Jormungandr. Mm-hmm. That's when he gives birth to Jormungandr. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does say like I think it says come like all the way. It just keeps saying come, come, come. Um, usually part oh, of a... Really? Uh, I'm about to a, say, no, yeah. A, maybe it's stop just an it, it, interesting it. mural here. <laughs> stop it. Um, but it's, a, oh, it's like the way that they depict it is looking like a deaf right. Because hmm. usually when he speaks, like when Atreus, remember at the beginning when he speaks the deaf right to uh, yeah. uh, Faye? Right. Mm-hmm. It's like supposed to be a deaf right to someone who died. Another thing is that I do not at one, like ever since I saw it, do not think that's Kratos at all. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you, I mean... They purposefully, I know they pur- purposefully did this to make it think you think Kratos. You're right. only seeing the right, the side that has no tattoos. You it's missing <laughs> the arms, yeah. but he's still not. He's not wearing like the normal clothes that they depict throughout the murals. Mm. So there's a few people. I think I think it might be Tyr, because Tyr mm-hmm. actually in mythology is missing an arm due to Odin. Mm-hmm. Um, and he seems to start to really admire Tyr right. at that yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the way that he, that 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 um, that right passage is, it could also be a curse, that he's cursing someone else mm. for what happened. And mm-hmm. I didn't mention it before. Um, the person who blew the horn, I'm thinking because they said that Jormungandr is actually blast back into the past. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's Loki. So I'm thinking the possibility that there's going to be another Loki. An actual grown-up Loki there. Okay. And hmm. Interesting. Now, this this I don't believe, but I think it'd be interesting. Tyr would be Loki. <laughs> okay. Tyr, future Loki. I, I don't think that's Tyr, future Loki. I, I just you thought see, that'd be I like, a great possibility. I like the idea of, let's say, you know, Tyr being involved like that to mm-hmm. where it's kind of like... Because, like, the same thing is the essence of the God of War, you know? Yeah. Is it, like, something that is transferable, like... You have Tyr, you have freaking, you know, Kratos, you have everyone's sorts. Or is it traversable to where if Tyr goes into, let's say, he can disguise himself as Kratos because they're both gods of war or something like that. You know what I mean? Or if, like you said, he's just depicted as such. It sounds like also something that Loki would do. Yeah, right. Or like, you know, to your point too, is somebody who's depicted as like, let's say, like the god of war, you know, as like Kratos' image or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I can see how you're saying it's like he's trying to save Tyr. But where does Tyr play into, like, besides Odin and, like, you know, Thor? Like, he didn't really play too crazy of a part in the story yeah. in the first game. Yeah. As much as he was a lore piece that was dropped in here or there. Yeah. yeah. He, you know, he was like, dropped in pretty heavily. He was dropped in pretty heavily, you know? But, like, I feel like as far as Tyr showing up in-game, like, physically, it would they would have to write it in, like, really well, you know? Yeah. I do like the idea, though, that you're saying of mm-hmm. what if it was kind of, like, Loki's influence in the future, kind of, like, you know, fucking things up. Mm-hmm. Or kind of, like, he came through and was blowing the horn or, yeah. like, he's the one that's, like, guiding Tyr or something like that or who knows. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, the, yeah, and the thing, too, is that Loki probably be the only one who can speak besides uh, Mimir to uh, Jormungand. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. The ancient tongue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and then they... they, they, they uh, kind of drop in hints of like 
time travel right. a few times yeah, throughout yeah. the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as much as I don't like the idea of time travel, like, I feel like sometimes time travel is used as a cop-out. Right. I can see them using it in this point because mm-hmm. the thing about Ragnarok is um, it's it's possible, like, they, they show different realms going through, diff- like, having different times, like, uh, um, Helheim right. goes a lot slower. Jonheim yeah. mirror suggests based on when you hear that dialogue about uh, Freya, yeah. Jonheim time goes by a lot faster. Mm. And again, this also goes by the bodies you see of the giants, which I don't know if they're, again, I'm not sure if they're actual bodies of the giants. Right. <laughs> but mm-hmm. in Ragnarok, the time, the only time when all giants are dead is Ragnarok. Hmm. And so it's like, I don't know how it would happen. I don't know what the idea is. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe there there was a, maybe that is just, to me, it might be just be like a, Giant carved mural. To yeah, right. Yeah. Like a Mount Rushmore of dead giants. Um, yeah. But <laughs> you, we don't know if, if it's true that Jormungandr was uh, taken back to the past through his battle with Thor. Yeah. Who might have come along with him? Yeah. Um, who might have actually, one of the giants may have actually, you know, done all the murals to show that this already happened. That's why we know it happens. Yeah. Where was I going with hmm. this? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another thing is that the, there's a lot of talk about breaking the cycle. And what a lot of the, the focus is breaking the cycle of vengeance but Odin he's like his main thing is that he's trying to prevent Ragnarok mm-hmm. right and that's because his death is depicted in Ragnarok right um, but ultimately he has control over Ragnarok basically because mm-hmm. he has control As, of the wolves yeah you know, yeah. so the, the this whole thing would like he has somewhat control of the cycle to prevent his own death yeah he's like he's he's himself is trying to break what is possibly a war cycle mm-hmm. because if Ragnarok already happened has happened before right then he's trying to keep that from you know happening again yeah and Mimir even said that this is the one thing that Kratos and Odin has in common is that he's also breaking the cycle but in his case he's <laughs> from a different land right and so he actually has a direct hand in breaking things and even like Fimble Winter is happening way like hundreds of years earlier yeah than mm-hmm. it's supposed to yeah Right. So like Kratos went Kratos is that answer, but Odin doesn't know it. Right. But uh yeah, I think that this whole idea of breaking the cycle is also breaking this cycle of, you know, Ragnarok happening. Yeah. Again Kinda and like again. I said, yeah, like Loki's mischief is because Kratos is directly involved this time, events are gonna shift ways right. they weren't supposed to necessarily. Yeah. They weren't supposed to. And they were saying it's like it's Loki's fault because of this, this or that. He was just trying to save his dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Like but no one knows that, you know, no because like that. let's say the only real lore, like to your point, was like what's in the uh the Jotunheim shrine or mm-hmm. what's in this land that's lost, quote unquote, or yeah. like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or stuff that was hidden. Like you can see even Odin was removing shit and like, you know, <laughs> keeping it hidden from people's knowledge, like Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that we don't oh, know necessarily. Um I don't know if you actually looked at the... Because you can go back and actually look at the rest of the murals. Yeah, yeah right. Um, there's a part that shows... Uh, and this is after events of the game. It, it shows uh, Mimir on his head on a tree. Huh. And this is the... like Again, this mm-hmm. this mural is after the events of the game that already took place. Right. Another thing is that you see stitches. It looks like stitches on his neck. So it looks like this oh. is a reattachment. Really? And next to it, it says um, Mimir. And then I forget what the word is after that. And under that is wisdom tree. And the wisdom tree mm-hmm. is the Yggdrasil. Right. Mm-hmm. And we know that Mimir's eyes, which is made of Bifrost, is one of the only ways to get into Jotunheim. Right. Yeah. So, and then there's two ravens on the tree. Um, this is, again, Norse mythology. Uh, and it actually says their name, uh, Hugin and Munin. They're supposed to be, I'm not sure if that's how you, I, I think I pronounced it super Japanese. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> yeah, um, right. They're supposed to be the two ravens that directly <laughs> are, like, are like Odin's ravens. Like, right. He controls all the ravens, but the two main ravens are these two. Okay. And so they're supposedly perched on this tree that Mimir's head is back on. Yeah, so it's actually a uh, Hugen Mugen. Yeah, Hugen <laughs> Mugen. Hugen Mugen. No, I mean, That's the real <laughs> pronunciation. But right? Yeah, no, but yes. it, it uh, makes me wonder, like... So they're directly watching uh, over Mimir. Well, the whole that thing works? is Odin's watching the whole thing. He's got crows everywhere. Sp- right. Speaking of which... Fuck those ravens, you know, for the collection. <laughs> yes. You know, before anything. I collected all the ravens, but I realized they give you two fluff ravens. 
Oh, There's really? two fluff ravens. If you kill them, nothing happens because you've already gotten the achievement. I don't like it. Okay. No, but that being said, yeah, like having the ravens Those there, yeah, definitely makes a lot of sense as yeah. far as like Odin watching everything. But it, no, I mean, uh, it more like because like it's, he has like fifty of them, right? What was it again? Fifty? Yeah. How much 50 was it? Of them? Fifty-one. If we're going to be specific, okay. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But these two are the most most important ones. So yeah. I feel like, and he's placed them directly above the wisdom tree. Wisdom tree into with Mimir's head reattached, and I feel like that's so that he. Once he finds out, that's how he can get to Jotunheim. That's right. why he does that. Right. Um, it makes me wonder why, if, if there's some kind of information he gets from that, from the dwarves, when they measure Mimir's hair. Yeah. I know that they don't work for Odin, and they definitely don't like him. I can see that. Or making yeah. him a carrying case or but... something. A mere keychain. We outfitted you with a carabiner. <laughs> yeah, like, made it easy for you. <laughs> yeah, right. Clips on everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but yeah. But again, uh, I think uh, it also seems like Atreus. I think he'll gain the ability eventually to shapeshift, or at least call upon the wolves. Well, yeah. they, they even said before. Like it's funny because uh, Corey Barlock says he puts little Easter eggs before he even realize it. Yeah. There's that dialogue piece where he's just like, "Can I transform into animals?" Yeah, and he's yeah, just like, right. "Can oh, yeah. I turn into a snake or a wolf?" Yeah. And I was just like, "Fuck, that's right." Loki does Loki turn into does these that, things, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, of course he would name these animals specifically. He would name but, those. But yeah. the thing is, uh, he's also the one who gives. Who gives birth to uh, Fenrir and your uh, yes, Jordan that's right. mm-hmm. and those two are pretty um, significant in uh, the start of Ragnarok as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I think that whole death right thing, instead of because he's he's more attuned to his powers at this point yeah. or whatever power he gets, and that he's he's cursing the gods, assuming he's cursing the gods instead of reading a death right. Yeah, um, in the same way. That it's gonna actually give birth to Jorgenman, Yor, uh, Jormungandr, possibly <laughs> also Fenrir at some point when because the wolves mm-hmm. seem to be the first thing that he's getting. Yeah. So yeah. Right. yeah. Deep this, this, lore. Deep this, lore so here. I was about to say, so you know, here. leaving this, leaving this podcast, I think we're all a little more well versed in Norse mythology. <laughs> I feel like leaving this game in general, you know, like I said, kudos to Santa Monica Studios. You know, I really enjoyed Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Like Fantastic the only, the only game. thing that dropped my rating down 0.5, you know, was the fact that just the gameplay on freaking Give Me God of War. Like that was it. <laughs> that was just me nitpicking. Like when yeah. you really have to nitpick at a game to find something wrong with it, you know, like I'd say all the way across. Graphics amazing, story was amazing, gameplay was great. It was just on that specific mode yeah, that I was yeah. kind of like, eh. was yeah. but fantastic. the gameplay, the gameplay was fantastic. So overall, like I'd say, kudos to them. Yeah, great you know? game. I can't wait to. Is, is a sequel this year? Is it twenty twenty one? No, I don't think it's confirmed. Mm-hmm. You know, fingers crossed, hoping. I, <laughs> you know, I think yeah. uh, I, I feel like um, Horizon will come before mm. God of War. Horizon yeah, for first. sure. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So That's if true. I mean. My prediction when I was talking to Cyrus about Horizon was that Horizon would come out either the by the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Yeah. Um, and the only reason why I, I say it. the beginning of next year is more because pandemic yeah. that is you know pushing back uh, development for some things. Yeah. That's true. Um, but uh, so, yeah. yeah, we'll go um, around. So. I was just gonna mention too, Freya. It, I think there's gonna be some point where. Um, I mean, she's gonna. I think she's gonna make a significant, like, irreparable damage to them in some way, like the like the whole maybe spreading of misinformation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think one of the ways to get her to kind of like quell her rage, in a sense, is when you get to Vanaheim because that's where she's from, and she can't live. She can't leave Midgar because mm-hmm. of Odin's curse. Right. So she can't like make amends with her people. So they still consider her. You know, a traitor. Right. Yeah. So I feel like when you go to Vanaheim, you might be able to help with that. Hmm. And then if you help break her curse, maybe. Hmm. I don't know how you would do it, but... Yeah, right? There we <laughs> go. Break, yeah, help break her curse. Like, that she, she still won't be on your side, but she won't be as like, I'm going to rain hell down <laughs> on you type of thing. Yeah, no, exactly. what, was the, what was the quote, Distro? I'm going to oh, so like, your body. I'm going to praise your, your body, body across the nine realms. realms. <laughs> you know, yeah. he said, she says like three things. And it was yeah, she like, says three things and they're all really gnarly. Yeah, yeah, you know? They're all oh, like, wow. Ooh, yeah, you know, I don't want to mess with that. The hype. The yeah, hype right. engine is going. But For real. But uh, speaking of the Valkyries, yeah, again, like, yeah, because, you know, you have Valkyries, half of them. Yeah. The loyal to Odin. The other half is like, well, they're, you know. Like, right. Split loyalties. And they, it's just they, like, they and obviously Freya still will not forgive Odin. 
Yeah. So it's just like I wonder how so that all these, works. Like, all these yeah, right? different like sides up against one another. All the moving pieces. Be interesting, I think. Mm-hmm. Top, top. One of my top uh, anticipated, for sure. Now yeah, right? I just have to add that I've been wanting to talk about this since the game that came out <laughs> because um, I'm big mm-hmm. into mythology. Yeah. I think it's obvious. I'm super big into mythology, not just yeah. Norse, not just Greek. Like I research a lot of mythology mm-hmm. in general because I like to write stories. Yeah. And I had a podcast uh, with someone else that eventually did not talk about this. <laughs> the subject was about this, yeah. and we didn't talk about it. So I'm just like, and this was two years ago. Yeah. So oh, man, nice. Now I'm just letting it all out. I'll say that I had notes to make sure I didn't forget anything when I when I back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I've since lost those notes, so I'm <laughs> missing a lot of theories that I probably were gonna, was gonna mention. Well, yeah, right. We couldn't uh, we couldn't tell you definitely had some. You're shooting from the hip. Amazing, entertaining. <laughs> Especially notes just about. Like, uh... Did you did you read what was on the mural? Yeah. Well, in Norse. Yeah. In Norse, yeah, though, like right? English. Norse. Yeah. Uh... Hold on, let me get my dictionary on, out. Uh... I mean, I am one of those people that just <laughs> like you know, like. Mm. Well, if so I looked up, it said Jordan Gander, and then this one says, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I know what you mean. Yeah, that that's really was, cool though. Uh, I know that was you... that was great to to kind of hear. I mean, I, yeah, I, we I, we appreciate I, you, man. Yeah, I did you the know, same yeah. thing when I uh, was playing the original God of War, but I'm like, oh, I wonder which gods we'll fight next. And so you're gonna, yeah, right? so you're gonna get, you're gonna get brushed up on Egyptian mythology, uh, sure. Celtic mythology, since those are coming up, I believe. Uh, is Celtic one coming up? I think that I'm was... pretty, I'm pretty well versed, I would say, in Shinto mythology. Egyptian is probably one I'm not as familiar with, but I think uh, it's Egyptian, the one with Yadagrasu. I feel like that's, mm. I mean, that's a very, I know that's a very um, God Japanese of an, name. God of Anubis, Ra, Osiris. Okay, there, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, I actually am pretty semi-familiar with yeah. Egyptian mythology. Um, I know this, I know they have a bird one that's, maybe that's why I was thinking Yadagrasu, because Yadagrasu is Japanese, but yeah. I think they have some kind of bird besides Ra. Yeah. Um, Horus. Horus, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one I always mix up Yadagrasu and uh, t- together Horus. with. Yeah, Horus. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they're coming. So yeah, right. Well, they're coming. That's another thing. So I think I personally think maybe the third game uh, is. Uh, you know, I was gonna say maybe the third game will be without Kratos, but I, that's hard. That's mm. I don't God think of that's war possible. Without Kratos, I don't mm-hmm. think that's possible with Ragnarok without. There's no way they yeah. do Ragnarok without Kratos, but yeah. I do think there's going to be a point again where you might think he's dead hmm. and or yeah. maybe near the end or the ending yeah. and he'll end up somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know this, there was this theory that Tyr is Kratos from the future, but I don't believe that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That could yeah, be right. interesting. Well, the, the reason why I don't think that one is because I think every, like Mimir has met Tyr. He would, yeah, he would know. He would mm-hmm. know. He also mentioned that Tyr was kind of gullible because he had, um, one point i think let odin into jotunheim mm. so you know that doesn't sound like kratos right <laughs> yeah right no exactly yeah <laughs> um yeah. but and then uh, there's this also it's the, another reason is because they say you know oh because Tyr is the god of war and kratos becomes the god of war mm-hmm. and i'm like well Ares existed and he was the god of war so yeah. i don't think kratos is going to become Tyr. Yeah. he could become the next god of war but hmm. i think they're meant mm-hmm. to kept Tyr separately yeah yeah Separate. I just want to comment on that. Yeah, right. I'm sure there's a lot I um, didn't touch up on that I'm forgetting <laughs> to mention because there's way too much to go into. When it, when it gets into mythology, that's what happens. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like there's it's just so much, man. so much content. You know, it's a yeah. well, it's a well of content. I yeah, think. right. So I, f- I feel like we we got good content here. You know, we can start we can start dropping the gate. Maybe you know, yeah. We can start kicking people out of the store a little bit. <laughs> Definitely you know, we'll, fun to uh, timestamp this one because they're pretty long. Right. We yeah. can't we can't kick anybody out of Moosefelheim. You know, because you know the fire giants aren't coming until Ragnarok. So you know we're basically chilling here by ourselves. We're, right. We're, we're well, getting kicked out of Moosefelheim. Well, Moose Suter's actually, actually, actually still there. Or Suter's chilling. Yeah. Yeah. He's no, just course, chilling, yeah. just waiting for Ragnarok. Yeah. Like, he's got his sword. What, you know. That's yeah. Literally what he's doing. Yeah. That's his sword there. Yeah. He's just waiting for Ragnarok. So he's like, this is for Odin. Wait, let's just wait. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait for my turn here. <laughs> so we'll send it over to Cyrus. Any last thoughts, sir? Um, can't think of anything. Honestly, I'm just way too excited for these games. I, I mean, just like you guys, my mind is racing with the possibilities of what's going to happen and <laughs> what's coming next, and uh, I'm just ready for it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I remember there was a point... I don't remember why, but there was a point in 
and when I was making notes back then that I would that I was thinking the Gallowhorn might be a sword. But I have no like I was thinking about it for a while. I'm like, I don't know why I thought that. Hmm. I feel hmm. like it was probably in my old notes, but Gallowhorn, no, that's a that's a rocket launcher. Yeah, well, <laughs> right, I was to say. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, that's mean, a, that's I, a, I saw that joke coming from a mile away. Rocket launcher. I saw that joke coming from a mile away. The most infamous of rocket dwarfs. They were up to craft and all kinds of crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? What if you just saw Brock and Sindri's sigil on the side? <laughs> yeah, you know, but I do like, wonder is the, is the Gallowhorn cool. the one supposed to that we used to call uh, Jormungandr because they never referred it to as such, right? But that seems like. This, like the type of horn. That's what I was thinking. I was like, "Is this the Gallon Horn?" But I don't think it's the Gallon Horn. Yeah, because mm. the Gallon Horn is supposed to be heard throughout all nine realms. Yeah. Yes. You know. Right, yeah. Right. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's it's right. supposed to freaking fucking shake everything. You know, like maybe <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be a sword because they were gonna try to play off of destiny and make it a weapon. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know my reasoning for why I thought it wasn't even a sword. Yeah. But it was there, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it was, was there. there. It's, it's, just... be, it's a good name for a sword. That's for sure. Yeah. Right. Be a badass yeah. sword. Gallowhorn. Oh man, the sweet prince, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, right. So, any any kind of last thoughts that you have, Trainhold? Nope, not so much. Cash wrap. Thanks everyone for listening. Last thoughts. Uh, God of War is cool. I'm on board with it now. Mm-hmm. Miles Morales sucks. Miles, Miles Morales. I'll get around to that eventually. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think uh, you know when a lot of these top notch AAA games start coming out. I think mm-hmm. we'll be there along with everyone listening to this, playing, chatting it up, probably diving into more mythologies, everything. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, right. And even with me too, it's it's exciting to see what Sony's coming through with, you know, like all these cool games that they have lined up yeah. and the future for freaking PlayStation as well. Because really asking yourself, what console do you get? I'm the kind of guy I'll end up getting both of them because yeah. of different oh, yeah. communities and so forth. But, but the idea is which one will you get first? Yeah, right. But the idea is which one I'll get first, knowing that I'm going to get treated to a God of War sequel. Right. I'm going to be treated to a Spider-Man sequel. You know, I'm going to get the Horizon sequel coming up. Like, yeah. it just looks like, you know, there's a bright light at the end of the tunnel for gaming. Mm-hmm. Even though there's been a lot of things that have been affecting us personally, we don't yeah. have to get into Rona or whatnot. But, <laughs> you know, we can see that the future is bright, at least, you know, on the Sony side for, yeah. for, for games coming up. Yeah. And it feels nice knowing. Knowing that Insomniac's still kicking ass, you know Santa Monica Santa Studios Monica's coming out of there. nowhere and kicking ass, you know, and like and all the other Naughty Dogs you know, having all kinds of Gorilla Games, Naughty you know, Dogs yeah, like oh yeah, Naughty Dogs. Game. We'll get into that later. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Gorilla Games too. Shout out to them. I don't give Gorilla them enough games. attention, but Gorilla Games does a good job as well. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. yeah, and then shout out to everybody that listens as well. You know, there's same engine for uh, Death Stranding, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. So that's why it's like, yeah, everyone that's listening to, we appreciate you guys. I know we're out here in Moosepolheim. We'll try to get some more content out for you guys. J. Jonah Jameson, shout out to you. <laughs> you know, shout out to Brock and Sindri out there, you what know, making Dana? a... What's up? What about Dana? What about Dana? Yeah. Yeah, we can... Eh. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like I was Dana I was much? I wasn't the biggest Dana fan, you know. I'm 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 a purist like like uh, good old cash rap, you know. Give me Jay Jonah, give me Peter <laughs> Parker. Jay Jay yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like it's that's original, my podcaster. The original troll. Right <laughs> yeah, you know? He is the original troll. <laughs> yeah. All right, awesome guys. So we're gonna drop down the gate. We're gonna call it a we're gonna call it a day out here in Moosepolheim. I'm surprised you even have a GameStop, but here we are. You know. All right, awesome. Have a good one, guys. I right, have a good one, everyone. Bye.